YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look what we got here. It's the Ultra Stick, the slow Ultra Stick. Except we have one curious additional feature, which you may have noticed. I have flapper ons. And yes, I have Astrix and Safe on there. And I also set up spoiler ons. And we set up correction both ways on the elevator, which is something we'll show you exactly how to do in the next portion of this video, but we're gonna show you how it flies first. And you can see we did add one additional servo and we had to modify one of our control horns, which was goofy, but you'll see that. If you watch the unbox build radio part or whatever you wanna call it, we also replaced the prop and replaced one of the gear that was broken because I've been waiting around on those for a while. All right, throttle cuts off, here we go. Oh yeah, now you can really wow. do it slow. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, folks. More, perfect. It's really slow. Guys, I want a slow, slow ultra stick. I want it to be really slow so that I can crash into the building slow. Just kidding, guys. What a gorgeous, gorgeous flight performance. And yes, we do have ASRX and safe. And it's well refined and we have a master gain because we had to reset the receiver. But you can also still do this stuff out of the flaps and you can jank it around like you stole it. And then you can bring it right back to planet Earth. Full landing flaps deploying. A little bit of throttle. You guys ever see a slow ultra stick with spoilers? Let's check it out. Here's the takeoff flaps going straight to spoilers. Wow, that's weird. Okay, so let's try this. Going forward, take off spoilers. Look at it go down faster. And then full spoilers. Spoilerons! That looks so weird. It does look really weird. So as you can see, that is definitely a strange way of doing things. I wonder if it'd do better prop hangs this way. Kind of weird, it sort of does. I bet it's gonna glide a lot faster too. Just the takeoff spoilerons would make it really slippery wing, change the airfoil shape a lot right through the beautiful sunset, and then down in the bowl camera crew. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's with one click of takeoff spoiler rounds. And the only reason I'm calling it takeoff spoiler rounds is because it's in the position of takeoff flaps. So we'll just do a couple of circuits here, give you an idea of what it looks like and feels like. Now into regular flaps, or excuse me, no flaps. Look how smooth that is, guys. About 30% throttle air, hard on the throttle air as we correct. Okay, now let's try this. Big drawn out loop. And then down the runway. Camera crew's good there, full landing flaps now. I really gotta say, roll rate is still reasonably good. You can still tie in a lot of rudder so you can get that thing turned around in a hurry. But the weird thing is it just sort of does it. It kind of holds its position. It's almost like having a heading hold. That's very weird. Don't mind our neighbors. The peacocks agree with peacocks you. Peacocks screaming at us. That looks so sweet. It looks like an ultralight, like a real ultralight. It does. Especially on a calm night like this. It's so quiet and just like peaceful. So also, when did we review our ultra stick the first time? Oh, it was snowing. That's or right. I crashed ground. it into a snowbank. Mm -hmm. Okay, take off flaps here. Let's turn around. Maybe that's why I like it so much better. So folks, if you're new to the hobby or you're just returning, maybe you had a, an ultra stick when you were a kid and you're like, hey, I don't want to build one. Well, first of all, they do have an Ultra Stick 1.1 that's pretty awesome, balsa wood aircraft. That one already comes, I believe, with flapperons, but you can actually separate and put inboard flaps on that if you want with an extra couple of servos. But this one's considerably more inexpensive. 1300 3S is a cheap battery, so it'd be a good one to get into. Now, is it one minute left according to our timer there? One thing that's really nice about this plane it's just the simple fact that it's easy to fly. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with it. Inside out loop coming. 
It's got plenty of power to do the stuff you wouldn't expect a smaller, lesser capable plane to do. And you've got really good telemetry and you've got thrust reverse, which I was gonna show you, but I guess I probably should bring it a little closer for that for landing flaps coming in. Lots of rudder, whoa, there it is. You won't even need it, guys. You won't even need it. Ah, I was gonna do it, but the camera crew didn't move. So we are going to take off here from the grass, show you grass ops. Pull up elevator. Now remember, my grass is long right now. Our timer's going off and we still have about 33%. How do you know, you might ask? Well, camera crew and I are gonna keep filming and we're gonna show you the screen. Look at that, so nice. Flaps deployed, full landing flaps. And just bringing that thing around for a really good look. And camera crew and I are gonna go out to the middle of the runway. We're gonna try doing some thrust reversage. Now, keep in mind, you do lose a lot of roll authority when you put on full landing flaps. So just keep that in mind. So the thrust reverse definitely takes a second to kick in. And that's something I've noticed and remembered from multiple flights with recent releases. I think it was the EC-1500. So let's show you a hand launch with takeoff flaps in forward thrust, throttle cut is off. If you guys haven't tried doing a hand launch on a plane like this, it's really nothing to be scared about. There's a great place to hang on to back here and you can just launch it in safe if you want. So for me, I have safe mode here. So full throttle. And there it is. Just kind of get back to the sticks. And there it is. So now you don't need to use safe. I'm just using safe to demonstrate that safe still works. And just to be clear, safe works on both ailerons because we did reprogram the receiver. And also keep in mind, you have limited bank angles. So the limited bank angles will sometimes interfere with your ability to make a sharper turn so when you let go, safe will take a second longer to get back to its normal attitude. So I wanna show you that here. Let's get a little bit, little bit of speed. Let's bank it all the way. Now let go and see, it takes a few seconds to get back to its level attitude. Okay, now out of safe. Now we're in AS3X. About 15% throttle. I love the speed of this plane now. Love it. Slow is what I do when I'm really trying to enjoy myself. And you know what's funny? Because you would think as you get into more aggressive and more, you know, like insane planes, of course, it's fun to see a jet cruising by at 120 or 130 or 140 miles an hour. But you know, to be honest with you, it just kind of gets old. I want to see what the plane is doing. I want to see how it's making that maneuver. I want to do more touch and goes and more intimate experiences with these planes, okay? If you're flying by at 120, there's not very much intimacy. It's just happening in front of you. Now, that's not to try to take away from that amazing experience. It's just a different experience. So if you guys want a slower experience, or if you want a crazy aerobatic experience, look no further than the slow ultra stick. But get yourself the extra servo, the extra short extension cord, and then don't forget, you're gonna need to get the stupid control horn set. And if it's still out of stock, you can copy and do it the way we did it. <laughs> Because if you do it the way we did, you don't need to order that. But I mean, for three bucks, you can save 20 minutes of your life or 25 minutes of your life. And I would highly encourage you to save the 25 minutes of your life because you're gonna appreciate us warning you off of that. The other thing too that's nice about having flapperons or flaps is that when you have flaps, you can wake up the elevator without always having your elevator be nuts. 
you're gonna change the way that the plane pivots around the pitch axis. So you can pivot a lot sharper. Doesn't mean you're gonna have to, it just means you can. Also, you may need to play with your CG just a little bit so you can get the most out of this plane. We have our 1300 3S just right there in the middle of the tray. I know if you guys remember this from when we did our original review of this plane, when it was brand new, it was an early release for us. We ran into a snowbank and it was super frustrating because I broke one of my landing gear. Oh wait, was that on our second thoughts or were we practicing? I think that was on our maiden. No, our maiden, we broke the landing gear on the basketball, or not the basketball court. The um, trampoline. It was a trampoline. That's right. But then I ended up breaking it again on my own. Was that snow? It seems like we were out of snow. snow. Oh, time flies when you're having fun, guys. But fortunately for you guys, all that stuff is back in stock and should be in stock for some time. And they're cheap. So if you think you might need them, just go ahead and get them. Save yourself a lot of effort. What a beautiful, beautiful sunset, by the way. We've been getting some absolutely fantastic sunsets. So one of the cool things they did at Knoll too, is they would always dead stick land their planes upside down. And I always thought that was super cool. <laughs> and of course they're doing it with far more capable aircraft than this. Not that this thing isn't capable. Not quite the same. Not quite the same as right. Going through the hole and then back up and around. So this is what we call high speed. Ooh, critically low alarm. I think I'm gonna respect it. We're gonna go right overhead. Camera crew, you good? Mm -hmm. We'll just go ahead and give you one more pass in the relaxing now landing flaps. Have to actually fly it to us. And then thrust reverse. See, camera crew moved this time. So guys, the critically low, it's not that critical, is it? Nah, just a suggestion. So folks, if you haven't ever experienced the slow ultra stick from E-Flight, you might want to pick one up. It's very fun. And if you add the flapperons, I think it's what it should have been in the first place, <clears throat> if you're asking my opinion. But at the same time, I gotta say, what a great plane. We were talking about dead stick landings, weren't we? See, that's what you're after. Take off flaps only this time. Landing flaps. Spoilers, get it on the ground. <laughs> so guys, what a fun little setup. Obviously the spoilerons are kind of a goofy thing we added in, but it was fun to be able to do it and show the entire scope of what it takes to actually set this up so that you have AS3X and safe correction on both surfaces. And I'll show you that real quick here. As we move the plane, I'll turn the gain all the way up, up, down, up, down, even with full flapper on deployment, up, down, up, down, and up, down, kind of a little harder to see there, but it's definitely correcting, okay? Now, really the telltale sign is with safe, Okay, not as much play, but it still works. So you have safe acting on both surfaces, which is really the telltale thing, whether or not you actually did it right. Now, that being said, we still have all the wonderful telemetry that we had before, which is super nice. We have the thrust reverse if you have enough channels and what a fun flight experience. I love going low and slow and I love doing that. It's one of my favorite things to do on nights like this. I just wish we could do it when it was windy um, because in, this plane will fly in wind, but you have to fly faster. And that's true on most planes. And I think when we did our review on this, we were up against a tight deadline and it was very windy and it was snowy. And it was being an Iowa spring, which could be snow, rain, hail, thunderstorms, tornadoes, or hot. Yeah. And so we got one of those and it was like a snowstorm. 
So seriously, there were snow banks over here. And I remember one day I was flying it and I think I crashed it over here and I mm -hmm. broke a prop. So I ended up flying it on a really dinky prop. And I always said to myself, this thing needs a lower pitch prop. No, what it needed was flaperons. So if you wanna make this thing what you expected it might be, do the flaperons mod. It's not very expensive. If you can't tolerate the parts that we show in this video, I understand. Just get two of your favorite servos that happen to fit that slot and you'll be fine. Also remember, you have long, long arms on this plane. So if you end up going to a shorter arm, you better get a stronger servo so you can go inboard and then you can take from the bottom hole and move it up on the control surface so you get the same deflection. Otherwise, you're not gonna experience results like we did. Also, I didn't overdrive my servos, but I probably could overdrive them a little bit to get even more deflection, but I feel like they're already barn door enough as it is. It flies amazing as it does. And I think on 1300 milliamp hour, we're getting about 15 minutes of flight time, excuse me, 14-ish minutes of flight time, maybe 13 and a half, depending on how hard you go with it. That's a good flight time on a 1300 3S in my book. Also, the other thing is when I did my smaller prop, which would have been in between our initial review and now, I felt like this thing started spitting out too much. It would reach out like this and it would cause a vibration and it was hard to not have that undermine the performance of the aircraft because at full throttle, which you needed, it would wanna delaminate. And as you know, that rubber bumper is a nice way to save the motor and the prop and things like that if you happen to roll a little bit too far and bump into a building or to somebody's leg or something like that. But I wouldn't depend on that, obviously. It's just a nice feature to have because it's a lot prettier and B, you can take it on and off, which is nice. It's a huge improvement over foam that we had to glue on every time we replaced a prop. Thank you, MX. So, great plane. Actually, that being said too, I would have liked to see just a conventional spinner on there. I think you could save some weight, but I think they might've done that because it was cool looking and that's okay too. I just think it's not enough to really stop complete failure or damage, but it is slightly better than having a spinner that you know blows up in a million pieces, which has happened to all of us that have had spinners. So anyway, I think the lighter spinner might've been good on cost and it would have been good on looks and it would have been kind of nice to be able to take off and replace with, uh, you know, like a different blade. Cause this blade is pretty much a perfect fit for that thing. And if you put a different prop in, it doesn't fit very good. Um, okay, so other thoughts on this plane? Since we've had it initially, uh, it's been sitting broken for about half the time because I kept breaking my landing gear and that's an unfortunate reality. I think they've since changed and slightly reinforced the landing gear, but either way, don't mark my words on that. All I know is they're very cheap to get. And we got the set that has the tail dragger wheel. If you only have one broken, I suggest you just get the whole set and then you'll have a, you know, two of them. Fair. So yep. it seems to kind of break the front one a little bit better than it breaks the back one. Cause there's that one that overlaps. Mm -hmm. It just depends on which way you put them in there. Yeah, so yeah. that'd be like the, the passenger breaks, side. Whatever, yeah, whatever right? goes in the front. This one's the one that, that pushes up against the back one and then they break. Um, that being said, if you break them just right, you can shorten them because there is a lot of prop clearance on this plane. So as you can see, uh, I didn't quite get it square. So you can actually shorten them, but my experience is they also break about where they cross there. So one suggestion I can make, if you're buying this plane for the first time and you are even a remote beginner, go ahead and get a spare set of landing gear. They're not very much money. I think they're like 10 or 12 bucks or something. Just get them. You won't regret it. And if you never use them, you'll have wasted 10 bucks on account of me. So I apologize in advance, but you're not going to waste them. You will eventually break one. Um, also, I think on the servo, is it worth it? Yes, absolutely. If you buy this plane, you must modify it with the flaperons. I don't think it's near as fun without. Also, I fly slow and I like to do so. And I don't do a lot of high alpha flying. I like to fly level. I like to fly the way the plane was designed to fly with a bunch of flaps. So very cool, very worthwhile, very interesting. And that's our, our, our bird, bird that friend. calls us, the one that calls us every night. That's so funny. So guys, we really appreciate you being here with us. Beautiful sunset again. How do you beat that? Flying a beautiful plane in a beautiful sunset on a beautiful evening. You really can't. So you got to get one of these or something like it. And if you don't like this, if the slow ultra stick is not your speed, 
and it's not your cup of tea and you do want that 150 mile an hour jet right there in front of you to enjoy in a sunset, that's fine too. More power to you. We have done so many of these different planes that you can pretty much get whatever type of plane you'd like. And so for that reason, we've been working feverishly, the camera crew, I mean, has been working feverishly to get you guys links on brianphillipsrc.com so you can sort by brand, distributor, or type. So when you wanna find a video about something, you're like, hey, you know, this plane or that plane, I really wanted to see it. It was a general aviation. I can't remember if it's a Cherokee or if it was a Valiant or if it was a Timber. You can just go there and help you sort through which one you wanna see. And then you can find the video. Playlists are what are called out. The playlist, every video we make is always in a playlist. It's either in the non-plane playlist or it's in a plane playlist. Or it's like in the new build of our house. We did a playlist for building our house. Building a bridge over here, building a bridge over there. We got tractor playlists. We've got hay playlists, things like that that most people don't watch on this channel. And that's okay. We get that everybody has a taste. But the vast, vast majority of our stuff is about aircraft. And it's sorted by that aircraft. The Unbox Field Radio setup, the maiden flights, second thoughts. Maybe Mods, some other. If we've done them. If we've done them. Yeah. Whatever we did. So if we've done them twice, if there's a V2, if mm -hmm. we've modified them, changed something about them. So anyway, guys, that should make your life very easy if you're in the mood to find a new plane that you can't live without. And that's what we try to do is make it easy for you to compare apples to oranges. Now, we don't do a lot of comparison videos, but we do every once in a while. We just find that it's really hard to show two things side by side because the conditions always seem to change between first one, second one, third one, so on and so forth. And so what we do is we just try to put them all up with the same effort. And then you can just start those videos side by side. Um, any other thoughts, camera crew? I think that's, I think we covered it all. It was a pain to do this mod, admittedly. It was a lot more work than it should have been because we didn't have the $3.99 uh, control, yeah, horns. control horn. If you get the control horn set, you just need the one set because you can use the one that came on the plane. Uh, but remember, that's a V-shaped control horn. It's weird and it's long. Mm -hmm. If you get two of those sets, you'll have enough to replace, and then you can divert back to the initial one servo setup. However, I'm gonna tell you this, once you have flapperons, you're not going back. You also did a bunch of mixing and stuff that somebody might not, you might not care need. about, yeah. or you can follow ours and you have to figure it out yourself. The cow disagrees. The cow. Sorry, Says cow. Says nobody will, nobody will not want that. It's gonna get dark, I'm gonna yeah. fly. So guys, the camera crew wants to fly, so I'm not gonna argue with her on that. And we hope you guys will stay tuned. If you want to support Brian Phillips RC and all the things we do in the camera crew, of course, and our four kids and all the different big investments we're trying to make, we're trying to get a pond dug right now. That's going to be very expensive. And we appreciate you guys helping us by doing what you've always done, which is watch, like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, support us on Patreon or PayPal or super thanks if you want to throw a few bucks, but we would much rather you save your money and buy a plane and let the money that's going to come to us come from them instead of directly from you. That way we build and bolster our relationships with these companies as you win by getting an amazing product, a product that you are aware of what its faults are and a product that you are expectant that it's going to be at least as good as we made it show on our channel because I'm just an average Joe pilot. I'm not an excellent pilot. I'm not a terrible pilot. I'm somewhere on the sliding scale of entry level, you know, intermediate somewhere in there. Okay. So if I can do it, you can probably do it better. So this plane is good. I think you'll enjoy it. Is it the cat's meow? Eh, probably not. But the thing is, I'm also not an ultra stick guy. I have four of them and I rarely fly them, but this is a great plane. It's very fun. It's very easy to fly. You can fly it slow. You can fly it fast. You can do loops. You can do rolls. You can do all the stuff you want to do. But if you add flaperons, you can add in the beautiful sunset flight that I really, really like. So guys, so much more from Brian Phillips RC is coming. If you want to stay tuned, we are going to show one minute before the Unbox Build Radio setup portion of this where we do the repairs and the modifications, or it will immediately follow this flight, which we're calling a remaiden because it was right after mod, which is one of the many, many things that you're going to get here on Brian Phillips RC. If you're just returning to the hobby, you're our target audience. If you're just getting into the hobby, you're also our target audience because we want to help prevent one and dones. And we also want to help prevent one and dones for you guys just coming back to the hobby. So if you're just coming back to the hobby, you're in the right place. Click the bell, subscribe, do all that stuff 
Support us if you want. That's really beside the point right now. You're going to be supporting us when you watch and you buy these planes. That's really, but there's a lot of people that ask all the time, admittedly. So for years we said no, we finally said yes, and now it's a thing. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for being part of this. Help us support the RC ecosystem. We need more flyers. We need more excited people in this hobby, loving this hobby, just like we do. So share this video, let them know that we exist and we're here to help. Thanks for watching. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. So you just saw what we did and we're gonna show you how to do it. Here's the slow ultra stick, folks. You may notice the one wheel design does not work as good. And if you're a pilot like me, you have coaxed those landing gear into a braking condition multiple times. So for me, I need to replace my landing gear and then we're gonna do an upgrade, okay? So as you can see, this is a kit. This is how they come, which is nice. And uh, we're gonna fix this. Now, the thing that's nice about this plane is when you do break a gear, you can usually try to shorten them, but my experience has been that they've broken right about here. So like in the impossible to get spot. <laughs> and so what we wanted to do is we wanted to show you two things in this video and you guys will know what they are. It's actually a total of three. The first of which is we wanna add flap rounds to this aircraft, okay? Cause as you know, flaps are a must have. I can't believe they didn't have flaps on this, but there is a way and it's not that hard. So. First, let's show you how to do this. These things are made of carbon fiber, so you don't wanna to try to do this with your fingers naked because you will probably get one of those nasty splinters and you will die. Well, you might not die, but it'll, it'll be painful and uh, you might wish for death after that. But anyway, so just get that thing out and you can see there's this little notch. That notch mm -hmm. is gonna be what kind of retains it down at the bottom. Okay, so let's open this up. Here's part number, we'll link to this stuff so that you guys know uh, where to get the goodies when you do need to get the goodies. And yes, you'll notice it comes with the tail wheel assembly as well. But my guess is you won't need the tail wheel assembly. You're just gonna need the mains. So in our case, we need the mains. So there might also be some options at some point in the future. Um, if you guys are ever needing to buy spare parts, you want to help support us, you can either follow the links that we put for this plane, and then you can find spare parts under the replacement parts. And this is true for any plane, mm -hmm. or you can find the spare part by just searching. And as long as you enter from the link, then you'll help support us. So if you want to help support us, that's great. Okay. So you can see these are, uh, the tires and the wheels <sighs> kind of dirty. And then and we'll, those all, are ambidextrous, right? They are ambidextrous. So all you need to do is just slide it in and it'll clip down here. You see, there's this little relief cut into the plastic. So it should be able to just go straight in and then just be careful. I like to press from the plastic. So you don't like, if you're sliding along here and you get a sliver in your finger, you're going to want to do bad things. Okay. There you go. So cool. that's how hard it is. So guys, even though they're, in my opinion, relatively easy to break, they're relatively easy to fix. And this is a cheap kit. So unfortunately, when you have replacement parts like that, you generally, it's not the type of thing you can fix easy. Believe me, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the other thing you'll notice is I'm a little bit wanting in the length, length department. area. Yeah, So sad. Look at this, I got a replacement prop, uh, yay. That's better. You guys may have noticed that I crashed while trying to land on the trampoline in our unbox build radio setup, made in flight, whatever the beginning period was. This was an early release and they didn't have the props out yet. So I was like, dang it. So anyway, I've got a prop here, but if you find yourself in a similar circumstance, I thought a less aggressive pitch might be kind of nice. So this is the standard stock that's 11 by 5.5. This is a 12 by four. So you're gonna have a little bit more length, which the landing gear will support. And you're gonna have a little bit less pitch. So you're gonna have a four inch pitch instead of a 5.5. But I am gonna put the standard one on just so you guys can see. This is incidentally, I believe, the one that comes on the timber. Maybe the original timber, 12 hmm. four. I think it's the original timber. But anyway, that should fit, but your spinner won't work. Also, I noticed under really high RPMs, especially when you go to a smaller prop, this one will, it will do this like that. And it will actually make an audible noise. So while I love that that spinner helps to protect your aircraft a little bit, and it's a lot better than the foam ones, it will fling out under high, RPMs. 
And so my thought was, okay, fine. Do we get rid of that or do we keep it? And I'm like, hey, for the sake of what we're doing here, we'll keep it. But you guys might wanna just get rid of it and just be done with it. So we need a screwdriver too. So I'm gonna grab my handy dandy little screwdriver, caddy. Look at this beautiful thing that you cannot buy online. Also known it's amazing. As Such garbage. a good design. <laughs> That's why you keep everything, people. We should just link to that e-bike in every video. Yeah, you have phone. to buy the e-bike to make the caddy. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll just set this stuff aside and show the entire process. Obviously, if you decide you wanna get this, you can follow the links. We will link to the prop and the replacement landing gear set. But really what we're here for is the servo and we'll show you how to do that shortly, okay? So as you can see, this will be super easy. You just have to take the screwdriver. I'm gonna go with this screwdriver, which is a three millimeter and see if that meshes up good. Yeah, it does, okay. And you also see how this is sitting on the plane stand. It's sitting with the wings sideways. Yeah. That's one of the things about the ultra stick. It's so dang narrow that you can't put it on the plane stand like a normal plane. So anyway, and if you guys aren't used to being part of Brian Phillips RC, this is what we do. We show how to build stuff. We show how to put it together. We show how to set up the radios to accommodate changes, modifications. And of course we've been doing that for years, but what we do that's a little different than the other guys is we show the results and then we show how to get there. We also show why to get there in many, many cases. And usually the why has something to do with the tree or something that I ran into. Yep, sometimes. And that's a very unfortunate reality that I face, mostly due to lack of piloting skills. Okay, so I'm gonna actually turn this. Sorry, it's just kind of an awkward angle. This one wasn't a tree. This wasn't a tree, was it, was, a it was a trampoline. So if you tempt fate, they have an expression that I can't use on this channel. If you mess around, you find out. Is that what I was, <laughs> I don't, I don't think I can do that one. what you are going look for. Uh, okay, so I'm just gonna lay this down here, guys. Okay. So as you can see, I use this little quadcopter 838, but that thing was spinning fast to make this thing fly. And it kind of flew at like one speed, not enough. <laughs> although, it was, although it was kind of fun actually. And I broke my second landing gear uh, when I was coming in, because the first set I got, I, I had broken one, so I, I put one in. And then I was like, oh great, this is awesome. I'm set, I got a spare. <laughs> Okay, well anyway, the rest is history. So here we do, here we do. I'm gonna slide this on. As you can see, this is kind of a weird prop shaft design too because we have a nylock on there. And that's of course good to keep it from pulling off or backing out of there. But I just thought it was strange that they chose to do that rather than some sort of a compression mechanism that uses the teeth uh, to be the locking mechanism. But whatever, it is what it is, it works fine. I really like the, uh, smart electronics on this particular aircraft because they're very high quality. And uh, I'm sure there's probably some people that think this plane is a little too expensive for what you get. But really, if you strip the electronics off and you just did that, it would be like a good value just for the electronics. So if you're like building a scratch model kit, I'm not trying to give you guys any ideas, but you could just like order this plane and take the electronics off of it and put it on your plane and it's a pretty good value. So anyway, just two cents worth. Okay, so that's locked in there nicely. Put away our handy dandy uh, three millimeter screwdriver, which is not indicated in the proper terminology. <laughs> okay, so this, we're just gonna open up the lips and stick it right in. Oh yeah, oh. Kinda made a little funny noise when you stuck it in there. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So 1300 3S, oh, that reminds me. Maybe would be a good idea if you charge your 1300 3S oh, batteries you do that. before you get ready to fly. So let's show you how we're going to do that. Turn on the S2200, or if you're buying this plane with the S155 and you're a beginner, this is going to be a 55 watt charger, single channel, up to four cells. We're going to be using three today. This one's a dual charger, and it'll go up to 200 watts, and that will charge very quick. So first thing you do is just plug in your balance lead. If you have a Gen 1, there'll be a balance lead. If you have Gen 2, there won't be a balance lead because you don't need the balance lead on smart technology because we have this extra data line that carries all the communication information back from the battery so it can talk to the charger. And then they have conversation. They decide what they're doing for the day. 
uh, have the usual gossip about the other batteries and how bad Brian puffed them. <laughs> and then they start charging. As you can see, this one's charging from, see that, 3.82 volts. So that's what happens when you have smart batteries is they auto discharge. And what that does is when you have a battery that runs as a LiPo, you're running at 4.2 to fly your plane and you're charging it or using it down to about in the mid threes, usually between 3.3 .3 on the lower end or for me 2.9 to about 3.8 is storage level. Now on Gen 2 packs, we run them to 3.9 volts and the lower you can store them, the more likely you are to fall over into the unchargeable state on one of the cells. But smart packs also help with that because they will automatically balance the number of cells. In this case, it's three. So it's like we rob uh, Peter to pay Paul and we rob Paul to pay Jan or whatever it is. So basically all these three cells are always keeping each other balanced with that charging circuit. So you are less likely to drop out of tolerances for the chargers to then be able to reinitiate charge. Because if you drop too low on a LiPo, the charger thinks it's bad and then it won't charge. Now, there are ways around that. You can usually just bring it to life for a second with another type of charging technique, which is usually to go to an ICAD setting or whatever, and then just bring it up like within the operating range on the discharge on the actual port that you plug into the plane. So in this case, this would be another, that's a 4S. Here's a 3S. Another 3S happens to be a 2200. So you can just go across your positive and negative and bring that up for just a quick second. And that'll usually get this back to where it needs to be. But just be careful doing that. You obviously, when you're charging batteries, you wanna be around them for maximum safety. And when you have a Gen 2 and it charges, discharges down to 3.9 versus a Gen 1, it charges down to, or discharges automatically down to 3.8. You can change that value. So if you know you wanna change it from 3.9 to like 3.1 or 3.9 to or something mm -hmm. like that, you could do that, but you're gonna deteriorate your cells quicker. The chemistry will upset faster. And then you start puffing, you start off gassing in those cells and then they get a little bit thicker. And over time, then that just adds to more and more and it just deteriorates faster. Okay, but every time you charge and discharge a cell in lipo, soft packs especially, there's a little bit of deterioration and that's why you only get so many cycles. All right, Daniel, enough teaching today. We're gonna to get back to this upgrade. So we've got the new prop on, we've got the new landing gear on, we're almost equipped. So what do we have to do here to upgrade to a flapper on configuration? Well, obviously we have one single solitary digital A345SL. So 345SL, so it's a 345SL. And if you look at this, this is the replacement parts that you can find when you're on the airplane. Whatever airplane it is, you go to optional parts. In this particular case, sometimes it's under replacement parts, okay? So this happens to be an SPMS A345SL. So if you look at the top of that, it's a digital 345SL. So it's the same thing. Now, if it was me, ordering this part again, I would probably suggest that you consider getting the Metal Gear servos and just put into Metal Gear servos. But this is a light aircraft, so the more weight you add, there will be an eventual deterioration of performance. So this is the extension cord they suggest. This is the um, servo they suggest. So we'll link to that stuff. And it might be by virtue of the actual plane, but we'll have, you know, just a list on this one. Mm -hmm. All right, so popping this thing opened, we're gonna go ahead and get this installed. And you're like, well, where do you put the, where do you put the servo, Brian? It looks like there's only one pocket. Yes, it looks like that, but there's actually two spots. Now, I don't know if I need to release this to actually do this, but if we did, we would undo these two and then the wing would come free. I'd like to try to avoid taking off the wing. So in our case, you're also probably thinking, well, what the heck are you gonna do about this? You've got two different styles of control arms. What are you gonna do about that, Brian? Because look at this control arm. Look at that weird one. So I thought about that and I thought, you know, there might actually be one that you're supposed to order 
So what we'll do our best is we'll link to it if you need to order it. But if not, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do today. And it's gonna be an easy solution. And by the way, if you're like me and you've crashed hundreds of planes, you end up with lots of extra spare. This, this is a little bit telling, I realize. But those aren't all from crashes. Um, no, no, a lot of them are from extras that came with airplanes yeah. that we just didn't need. And these are extra spare servos that we have lying around. So when we don't get them directly for a specific plane, we usually just get generic stuff. So that being said, I'm gonna throw this stuff away and we're gonna get this install going. So Phillips screwdriver, long this time, I'm gonna unscrew the existing digital servo. Okay. I'm gonna unscrew the other digital servo. If I can get down to it, ooh, it's not looking real good. Hmm, so the next option would be to release this tray and see if we can move it back a little bit. So I'm gonna undo a singular Phillips screw and just slide back the wires. As you can see, that gives me a little bit easier bite on the Phillips screw. And then also I should have probably started with this, but I'm gonna go ahead and undo this too. Okay, so this is coming undone. And I managed to drop all three of them into the pocket. That's usually about the way it goes for me. All right, so now that that's dropped in the pocket, I'm gonna have to use my... You just wanted to use your forceps. My forceps. It's your favorite thing. Forceps, hemostats, okay? There we go. Okay, so screw number one. Magnetic. <laughs> Here, go ahead and get those other screws. Of course, now that I need to pick it up, it won't magnetically attach right. to it. And then there's the third screw. So if you don't have a pair of forceps, you might want to consider getting some. So these are just simple pan head screws. If you guys ever get in a pinch and you can't find a replacement screw, what you can do is you can get those from RTL fasteners and they are really handy. In fact, we're going to be doing that shortly because I'm just thinking there are no extra screws there. And there are no screws in those replacement parts. So keep that in mind. In fact, that's a good point. <laughs> there were no screws included. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna grab our RTL fasteners kit. And we got a bunch of different styles in here. So we'll just grab both kits here. And then we also have a bunch more in this big box. But I think what we need, oh, there is actually stuff in there. So RTL fasteners is a great company to work with their small mom pop style shop. And what we have is a metric kit here, excuse me, and a standard kit here. So got different, if you look from the bottom, you can kind of see what we're talking about, just different sizes. And this is the kit. So if you get that kit 743, you can follow our link. And then this is the, this is the other metric style. But then of course the this is standard, this is metric. This is the standard kit. Okay, so there's your kit number, that 9155. So you can see each of these kits comes with different stuff. That Loctite I added in there, by the way. You can see all those different choices. So it's really nice to have that. Now, this is another, I don't think this one's so much a kit as much as it is just miscellaneous hardware that we have worked with them for. And look what we're gonna end up seeing here. Look at that, that's pretty good. Wash your head screws. See that? That's what I'm talking about, guys. Mm -hmm. Almost exactly perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab this and just put that here, and then we're gonna go compare that. Okay. That's why we love having these RTL fasteners kits. They have saved the day multiple times. Yeah. So now look, is that gonna be a good enough match? Looks like the shaft size might be too small. So this one's, the shaft is a little bit bigger. So let's go back to the kit. And this is what's so nice about having one of these kits around is that you will inevitably find the wrong size shaft or the wrong length or something like that. And then you can just go into the next size over and see if you can find right there. So that was like a size zero. This is like a size two. That's a two. See, this one was a zero size quarter. And this one's a size two, so it's quite a little bit bigger. Let's see if that works. And really what I need is, I wonder if I have a size one somewhere in here. Do you see it? I don't. Hmm. No 
And all I did is I took each of the bags and cut the actual label off mm -hmm. and then just laid them in here. Because that was one thing that I really was bummed about when we got this kit. They come like this. They in come bags. in bags. Yep. So we just cut Makes it really off. hard to search for them. But like this might be the perfect size. Let's yeah. see. Funny thing is it's probably a number one size. Okay. See this? Look, guys. See, that shaft is thicker than that shaft. But I think we can make this work. Okay. You don't want to be too thin because you just won't get good purchase. But if you're too thick, you'll actually ream out the holes. And um, I know from experience, you don't want to ream the holes out. You may not get an opportunity again. Okay, so I'm going to lay this down. Now, the screw to actually hold the control arm on is included in this kit here. Okay, so that should be no problem. And for those of you who've been doing this hobby for any length of time, you're pretty much used to this stuff. This is normal stuff. Okay, so you're gonna pop that off and you're gonna pop this off and you're gonna be like, that is one screwed up control arm. <laughs> yeah, I agree, it's kind of weird. It is. Okay, so you see it's got that long length on it. So I'm gonna just lay this down and obviously when you look at this servo, you can tell it's an exact match because you've got the same exact number of teeth on the spline and that's one of the things that's nice about this. Jeez, those splines are so fine, you can barely see them. See that? Those teeth are so small. So you have a million different little choices of exact position. And then they sent this little extension cord to go with it. And so when you order, you have to order that short extension cord or you won't be able to get up to the top. Okay, so I'm just gonna see if I can get that to go. Good Lord. Oh, that thing is hard to plug in. So now what I need to do, I need to do one more thing. The XPC battery checker is gonna need to come into play here. XPC battery checker is also, if you weren't already aware, I always use my 1300 milliamp batteries when I'm testing with this stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'll use the 2200. <laughs> you have to energize this thing with any battery that you have sitting around. So I just grabbed a 2200. And then what you can do is you can plug this in and center the servo. Okay, so once you plug it in, I'm gonna scooch RTL out of the way. You don't have to center it this way, but it's convenient. So click. The other way you can do is you can just use your, your radio. Okay, so that was not centered. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. So whichever direction it ends up. Okay. So double tap and you can do a sweep. That's pretty cool. And then you can press and you can go like one click at a time and you can move it to an exact position. And then you can replicate an exact position too, which is handy. So like if you have two servos that need to be off by a certain exact degrees, then you can move the first one, then you can plug all of the servos in here and it'll just snap to that position. So like if you unplug this and you move it a little bit, which is tough on servos, so try not to do that all the time. Watch what happens. It's gonna go right back to that absolute position. So that's really nice. So of course, in my case, I want it centered so I know that I'm getting it lined up right and I don't have to dink around with it a bunch. So I'll actually bring this over here so it's ready to rock and roll. And what do I need to do? So I'm gonna pop this off. Now we need to make a comparison on lengths of control arms. This is probably gonna be where there's a mess. Scat hairs. Okay, obviously those holes are way too big. They're gonna be, this is useless to us, okay? Mm -hmm. That is not gonna work because if that was gonna work, you'd have way too much slop out here, okay? So what are we gonna do? This leaves us in a little bit of a predicament, guys, because look at this. No matter what I do, I am not gonna end up with two of the same unless I were willing to put a centering tool into this Okay. What kind of a centering tool would you use? Probably a Phillips screwdriver or something that's small enough. Let's see if I got a 0.7 millimeter. That's probably small enough. No, that's not gonna work very good. Let's see if we can get something else. No, maybe this. Will that line up? Oh yeah. Okay, so now I can tell what overlap I have. So in worst case scenario, suppose you haven't crashed millions of planes like I have then what you would do is you would basically take and make one of these a donor, okay? So you're gonna have to cut it up. So now how do I know which one's which? Well, I'm just gonna mark it with a marker. 
So I'll use this ultra fine Sharpie and this is gonna help us to make sure that we have the same length on the control arms, okay? Now we will be controlling them with separate channels. So you can make some minor adjustments to one versus the other, but you're not gonna need to do that. Okay, so I've got that lined up. The only reason I have this here is just to kind of keep things centered. And so now it's pretty evident to me that we're gonna be lining up on this outside hole here. So that's the hole we need to use there. And then that would be the hole we need to use there. And the only other one that lines up is the inside one. Okay. So those are the only two choices we have okay. as per the stock offering. Okay. Now, is there anything particularly wrong with using those outside holes? The answer would be maybe. Here's why. You have a certain amount of deflection with this big, long, weird, you know, that length. And if we were out here before, now we're gonna be in here. That means we're gonna have less deflection. Let's move this to the black so we can actually see what we're talking about. If you were here before, it looks like we were here before. Because look, you can see the wear points. Did we go to the outside? I don't know. I was just wondering that. I didn't pay close enough attention. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose a little bit of output because you don't have as long a lever arm. Okay, so one suggestion I have is going to your crash plane bin or your extension bin or whatever, whatever you call this thing and look through it. And I have gone through painstakingly labeled by brand on a few of these, like Turnigy. Oh, look, I also have some screws here too. So if those end up being the right size, then that would okay. be nice too. But it looks like those screws are super similar. So I had these from other times when I've gotten different servos that do include that. Um, here's Turnigy Metal Gear servos. They seem to have a different spline size than some of the other. That's an analog Metal Gear servo. This is a Turnigy, we used to use a lot of Turnigy um, Metal Gear servos back in the day. I have a question. Yeah. Since you're going to two servos and your servo is actually gonna move out a little bit further, is that gonna make up enough difference? Yeah, that is, a, that is, be... okay. That's a good, that's a fair question, but I'm gonna answer why it is not the correct thing. Okay. Okay, this is the pivot point. It starts here and it goes out to there. So this is how far you were pivoting before, however much that is, one inch. Then now you're gonna be pivoting from here, okay? So the only thing that might change is that technically you have however many degrees of movement you have, you were splitting the difference between those two surfaces previously. Mm. Also, you're splitting the difference because of the angle here. So you're probably okay doing that, but I just wanna see if I happen to have one because I would like them to be identical if possible. So this one here, as you can see, the splines are not gonna line up perfectly, although that did work pretty dang good. So just in looking at this, you can see those splines are very fine on here and they're not as fine here. And so that's what you have to watch out for is, is your spline size the same? You can tell that's obviously going to be more coarse, okay? So that's not gonna work. Did you catch how that didn't work? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep going um, and see if I can find any of these other brand varieties. Uh, it looks like these ones are kind of a different shape and they've got that really, really long armature to it. I'm gonna just see if those ones are going to be appropriate. Okay, so now I'm just gonna look. Yeah, that's super coarse, see yeah. that? Really coarse, really? that's definitely not gonna work. And so this is what happens when you get into the hobby for a while. You start storing up lots of these unique, these Turnigy Metal Gear. Those ones look pretty coarse too. Well, that might be close, but those aren't very long. And you guys may have noticed one thing about this is that I have a lot of Turnigy parts. Well, part of the reason there's a lot of Turnigy parts is because a lot of them failed. And so I ended up with a lot of re re replica, re replication. That's really coarse That's too. coarse too, but it's really it's similar really size. Simple. Ooh, here's one that might be different. It's like the vast majority of these ones are gonna be like Turnigy style sizes. Okay. I just didn't take the time to organize every one of them. These ones are free wing, okay? So I didn't have very many free wings. Uh, see, real coarse too. Mm -hmm. But the whole size is good. I wonder if it'll slide on there. No, different size, different size. See, it's smaller. 
I don't know if you're getting that focused mm -hmm. in time or not. You're going to have to let me know. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to look through our super pile and come right back when we find one. Okay, so sometimes when you're really desperate, you make something like this, okay? Now, I'm not saying I'm so desperate that I need to make something like that, but you can see all we did was we used a paper clip that went through two holes and we used a provided and then a long to make an even longer, okay? Now that longer is gonna get us even longer yet than what we had previously, okay? Now this happens to be, I believe, a turnigy style uh, pinion on it. But the thing that's nice about that is it does actually fit and it does go around the same spline. Now that being said, they are admittedly not the exact same spline position or the same spline size. These ones are finer than those, okay? So what can happen is if you use the wrong spline size, you actually open up the spline openings on this. It's not really a big deal. We're just talking about the texture on the outside of this. It's very fine. Okay, so if you're ordering these parts, you might wanna think about, again, when these got shipped to us, it was earlier in the process and they weren't yet available, but this should be available now. So that's our battery chargers talking. We'll come back in a second again. All right, so just in our... Deliberation. Deliberation. We came up with two different options. Okay, so these are the options that we have because we have access to these parts. If you don't have access to these parts, then there actually is a linkage kit or a control horn kit that you can get that comes with this and two shorter ones that would be available. It's like four bucks. So you can just get that when you order your kit if you wanna add this. Um, that will give you three additional screws like this, but not the screws that go on the inside. So again, you're just gonna have to scavenge from the crash plane or whatever, and you can get a million screws from those things. That being said, the other thing you could do is you could go find another similar control horn if you can find it on another crash plane. But I'm gonna tell you this, this is a weird one. It's long, it's weird, it's unusual. So that being said, the parts that are on the website are back ordered right now. So we're just gonna show you what we're gonna do. And if you see here, we already lined up so we know that at worst case scenario, you can still take and use either of those holes, okay? And my marks are wiping off, and that's how I'm identifying which one's which. So I'm gonna just go ahead and mark this again. Okay, these holes, okay? So now I'm gonna show you one other way to do this. And I know you guys are gonna be like, oh man, Brian, you're getting the cutters out. You're getting the cutters out because I got better things to do with my life than to worry about these stupid ends. So I'm gonna show you another, another trick, trick of the day. Oh my goodness, you just did it, Brian. Now you're committed. Darn straight I am, okay? So I cut it as square as I can with, uh, you know, little regard for my future. Okay, so now I did two more cuts and that makes it nice. And then if you have a granite countertop, it works really nice for sanding. <laughs> If you don't have a granite countertop, you might need to get a sanding block or something. But as you can see, I've got a little, little rough spot. I mean, it's just, you got to use what you got, right? So there you go. So we've got this nice sanding spot here. We'll just take a little teeny bit more. It does actually work amazing for this sort of thing. Like I've tried using sanding stones. It doesn't work as good. <laughs> so there you go. So that's a perfect shape now. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you one other option now. Again, obviously this would be an option, okay? But you're gonna be limited to the length. But if you order the servo, you're gonna get this with it. So what can you do with that? There's two options. A, you can make another donor part like this, which is gonna be hard because those holes are so big, okay? This donor part plus this donor part equals the possibility of getting the length you need. Okay, you see what I'm going with? Oh, mm -hmm. Yep. So it's not perfect, it's not ideal, but it can be done, okay? So if I were to put these together, then you're like, but you can't do like you did here because the holes don't line up, Brian. Yeah, that's true. Now, the other option is you could just get like two that are closer, okay? The only problem is you only gain on this one, even with the longer length, 
you only gain one additional hole. You're still three holes short, which is like probably a quarter inch shorter, okay? So that makes a big difference in throw, okay? This is, after all, gonna be an aerobatic sort of plane. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that underneath just so I can line up, and guess what? Once I line those up, I get to see the fact that all of a sudden, if I line this up now, we have approximately the same length. Now, that is close enough for what we're doing, okay, for flap rounds. Now, before I start chopping off this end, I wanna make sure I have this end in order. And I would prefer to use this one because we'll get more length that will give us more support, okay? Now, you could also just cut this side off and you could use that side to extend this, okay? Now, this is just some of the creative stuff that you have to do when you do this hobby. But at Brian Phillips RC, we like to show you how to do it because the thing is, many of you are gonna be in this exact circumstance and you're gonna get online and the stupid part is gonna be back ordered and you're gonna be like, how do I do it, Brian? Well, the only other option I can think of that would be easy would be to get just a different servo. However, that's gonna be a little bit more complicated because then it has to fit this pocket and then you have to get the right lengths and you have to make sure you have the same. So you end up buying two so that they match. Well, if you buy two that match, and you change the output, that's fine. The other thing you could do is you could go inboard more and you could change from the outside hole to the more inside hole, okay? What that's gonna do for you is you will change the amount of output here without changing the length here, okay? So if you go inboard here by a number of holes there, you get symmetry and then you bring it from the outside to the next one in or to the next one even still. So what that does is you change the length, but you keep the same output. However, however, you put more torque requirement on your servo and it's pretty excessively more torque because if you have a longer lever, you're providing all this output here, right? If you have a shorter lever, then you're requiring less. So it's just, it's the simple principles of machine. So in my case, I think the easier method would be to of course buy those parts if they're available, but since they're not currently, I'm gonna see what happens here. So we'll come back when we get that solution. Okay, so we did a little bit of research here and what I was just gonna show you is my three choices of paper clips that we have in our office. <laughs> and so no, we're not gonna link to those, but I just want you to see that there are obviously different dimensions. This is the bigger style paper clip and it fits really good. There's not a lot of slop on that and that's what you want. If you get one of these smaller ones, what you have is they end up being too sloppy in the hole to really actually hold. And then this was just a little bit thicker and yet it was still a little bit too much slop. But if you go up to the right size like this, then you'll get very limited slop. And that's what you're looking for. Because all you're gonna do is you're gonna pin from two points and then extend this so that it's longer. So we're gonna heat this and basically go in through there and there, the two longest points, and then that's gonna make this as though it was one piece, okay? So it's really easy. We're gonna get this prepared and come back and show you how to do it. So I like using lighters for this. See all those rough edges? You can heat that and just melt it lick your finger and you can smooth it and it makes for a really nice smooth edge. Okay, now also, what we need to do now is we need to determine which side we want to go up, okay? So that's kind of the bottom and that's the top originally. It doesn't really matter on this one so much, but just look at that real quick. Yeah, you always gotta get just it underneath sand. the yeah. sandy edges and then I'm gonna just hit it quick with heat and just make sure we don't have like a big buildup of material on this top portion that's gonna be our flat that goes up against the bottom of that, okay? So then the next thing is if you have a marker that happens to be a pretty fine tip, you can actually mark this and then just make your um, penetration with your melting this way, okay? I'm just gonna mark two holes just so I've got two reference points, okay? So you can see those very small holes. Now you can use this with a drill bit, it's just fine. Drill bits work fine, but I found that this is easier if you can heat a tip 
and then get your penetration that way because you can get exact pinpoint accuracy and it will work well for you in that way plus the drill bit's a long 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 ways it's down in the basement yes so now if you don't like doing this slow you can use your oven or you can use a heat gun or you can use a drill or you can use a torch or you can do whatever you really want it's fine because it's not going to make a big difference you just want to make sure that where i'm like holding it here you don't get burned and kids obviously ask your parents permission or have them help you with something like this so you don't burn your house down because that would be annoying for your parents and you have to deal with all the insurance and crap like that so in other words kids if you're watching don't do this at home have your parents help you if you need to at least that way it's their fault if something goes wrong okay so i'm just gonna let that cool for a little bit lick my fingers okay so now i'm gonna pull this back out we've started the hole but we need to get full penetration so i'm gonna heat it up again and this is what happens when you try to use a lighter to do a stove stove's job so yeah we're just gonna do it with a stove because you know we're all about safety here on Brian Phillips RC. If you don't have a gas stove, okay, that's always nice when it doesn't ignite. <laughs> it doesn't is, is our uh, is our oven like defective? What the heck is going on? That was cool. We'll have to look at that after we shut off this video. So this is basically I'm just heating the tip. Yeah, 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 I know. Some of you guys are sitting at home thinking, take the prop off, you're gonna cut your fingers. Don't burn your house down. Okay, now push it all the way through so you get to the cool spot and then just like let it cool for a sec. Okay, so we're just letting that cool for a sec. Okay, very good. So now that that's cooled, we'll just check, make sure we actually are cooled and we are. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna pull this out. Now I wanna pull it out the clean end of the apparatus because we just use this to melt and there's gonna be a little extra residual plastic. So you can see that hole is right where we wanted it. And then let's go ahead and line it up on our extension device. Oh, look at that fancy dance. Okay. So now all we have to do is make our bends. So let's do that next. So in order to bend, I like to have a little bit extra come out the bottom and wrap. So you see this little bend here, I wanna get that flat. Okay. So I start with kind of a, an L shape or whatever you wanna call that. And I wanna get that started back here. And hopefully we got our position exactly right and true. So I'll slide that through. And you're like, but that doesn't look very good, Brian. I know, it doesn't. See, now we've got our hook, okay? So we can take this and go in like that, and then we can slide it down. And then look what we can do. We can take and we can heat that, and then we can press this in and get that to bite into the plastic, just like this. So you're like, but that's that angle is not even correct yet. Yeah, I know, it doesn't matter, because we're gonna bend it to be correct right now. See what I just did? Do you see that? Now I can get this really perfected and then bend it whenever we're ready. Okay. Do you see how that's got that kind of not quite 90 degree angle to it? I'm gonna just go a little bit steeper. There we go. So it's like that. Now back to the death machine. Seriously, we gotta figure out what the heck is going on with that back burner there, camera crew. Sometimes the gas gets clogged up the output thing. So you're just making like a little that's toasty plastic staple metal plastic staple i'm just getting it in there yeah. it just it just locks it yeah so that stops it from slopping around okay so once that's done you can just let that cool for a second or just take and grab once you've lined it up properly you can take and grab it with your needle nose pliers and give it just a little love and hold it in there, okay? So once you've held it in there for a second, that thing should be totally cool and ready to rock and roll, okay? So now the next next step is, you can actually kind of slip that back out of there if you want, unless you get really good penetration, okay? And then what I wanna do is I wanna cut off a lot of my excess because we don't need that much extra. And then all we're doing is we're just gonna bring that up and hook it back in. 
which is the challenging part, okay? Ugh, get off of me. Okay. And I'm thinking I might have missed a step here. Because we have to bend this and then we have to hook it back into the singular point that we want, preferably the furthest out. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you can actually just do two of them if you want. That's actually the easiest way to do it. And then you can use a drip of CA or you can just fold this over. Okay. Oh, see it? It slipped out. That's okay. Not a big deal. It's okay if it slips out. Just slide it back in. Once you get it slipped back in, get it back down to the position you want it in. This is where a second, second pair of needle nose pliers would come in handy. Ah, come on now. So this is all just to replace, to try to keep everything the same length, okay? And you're like, Brian, are you kind of overthinking this? Yeah, maybe, possibly. That's what we do best on this channel. Mm -hmm. And when I say we, I mean I, because my wife is not like that. She does not overthink things like this. She overthinks different things. Yes, not this. Okay, so you see we're not quite lined up yet. So I'm just gonna hold this here and then I can walk this over to the center. Okay, so now this is just basically gonna buy us a little spot. Now we can bend, okay? So usually at this point, it's a little tricky because you have to, now you have to kind of plan out. You see how I'm biting this sideways? And what I wanna do is I wanna pull this up and we're gonna make like a bit of a staple out of it. Okay, but in order to make a staple out of it, you have to have it trimmed somewhat or you won't be able to bend it up enough, okay? So you see, now I have to bend it, rotate that, and now I know about how long this needs to be. This is gonna shoot. Okay. It's gonna shoot in the garbage can, okay? It's like a BB or something. Okay, so now I need to bend it right around this pivot point, and so I'm gonna hold it with this, and then, see, you can't do it with your fingers, so you gotta get another set of tools. In this case, I'll use a pair of linen pliers Lineman pliers or just another pair of needle nose pliers would probably work fine. Okay. So you see, I got to take and bend this. So I'm going to actually grab on like this to the back side of that so I get a pry point. See how I'm making a little 90 out of it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I have that at an angle. The angle of the dangle is set. Now this is in a V for victory shape, and that's aligned or close to it, okay? So now we can just get our alignment exactly true. And then we're just gonna push that in. I might need to tweak it just a hair to get it to align. You can kind of see where I'm going with this now, finally, after all this time. Okay, so I'm gonna actually support back here so I can support that while I'm pinching this in and try not to pinch your fingers too bad, but if you do, that's just the nature of the beast. Ha ha! Okay, so now bite that down and get that so it's situated so it's actually purchased all the way. And you guys see what we just made was the most incredible, most complicated, most difficult <laughs> control horn in the history of control horns. But you're also gonna notice one other thing. A, it's ugly. B, it was a lot of work. C, are you kidding me? D, why didn't you just buy the thing? E, because it's out of stock. Seriously, it's not the same. But it's dang near exactly the same. Now, you're like, but what about the height, man? You've got a difference of about, uh, I don't know, call it half a millimeter in height. So now that we have that done, there's two or three different ways you can complete this. You can complete this by doing nothing more. It will work just like this. And now what you've done is you've created a lever point that's not only sturdy, okay, metal reinforced, it's not coming undone, but you can mimic the exact placement. Now I did get a little bit of an asymmetry here. It's not quite perfectly lined up, but that doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you're just looking at point to point. Okay, oops, just throw that anywhere. So guys, that's why you come to Brian Phillips RC because we'll show you how to spend three hours doing a five minute project. <laughs>
Now that we're committed, I can cut this thing off. So I usually cut square once, and then I cut this way, and then I cut that way. And then you guys remember this part from earlier. It's, it's the part, like what you need to do is just get, get your wife a uh, 12 by six. 10. 12 by, by 10. Four. That's not 12 by 10, are you kidding me? It's 10 by four. This is, this is four feet? Yeah. Oh, that's not 10. Yes. Okay, whatever. Just go get your wife a slab of granite and so you can sand the bottom of the, you know, when you need to do this. And don't pick the color that she wants. Pick the color that, that you will want. make your screws disappear, disappear. when you drop them The off. best, right. Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and heat this and just heat that edge, okay? All right, so now we have two control horns. Simple as that, or you can spend $3.99. I don't know. The when, last 27 minutes have been a real joy. I usually would keep that, but this is, this is like, uh, this is an accommodation to the wife. He's going to dig it out of the trash later. No, I'm not going <laughs> to. I promise. I repent. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to pause, clean up all the crap from that and come right back. Okay. So the other thing we wanted to mention that we kind of forgot to mention just then is that these were not the RTL fasteners screws. They would have been size one. It went from size zero to size two. And so we ended up finding those when we got the parts for our servos. So yes, full, admittedly, I just want to let you know, if you're trying to find that RTL fastener size, they should have it. You just got to replace the, the two or the zero for one. And mm -hmm. then that's what you would get. And you can also order, like some of these components, when I first started in RC, I went nuts and I'm talking spending weekends looking and ordering and like, I gotta save the shipping and oh my God, oh, I need, I need to have 400 XT60 connectors. Right. And I did that obsessively. That's shocking. Obsessively. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe. Sure people will not <laughs> After believe. having watched me build that uh, control horn, you know. So yeah, so you're actually supposed to take this wing off. So since we're totally disconnected at this point, we just have one wire to deal with, right? Okay. So we'll just go ahead and actually follow the instructions or, you know, it's probably stupid because we're gonna like literally be putting it back on. Should I just leave it on? You don't follow the instructions. I don't wanna follow. If I take this wing down. off, then I will have to admit to having followed instructions. And I think this can make me like less manly. Okay, so we're gonna pass this over to this side. Now I've already ran into the next problem. That is, you know, there. It was, there was just a little bit of glue stuck on it. Okay, so those two screws we just talked about, I'm gonna go ahead and use the first servo to go to the one side okay. and the second servo to the, to the other side. There's no particular rhyme or reason to it. It's just whatever lines up first, okay? Now keep in mind, because these are flapperons in our case, well, you can set them up as flapperons or spoilerons. Now what's the difference between flapperons and spoilerons is spoilerons are designed to either go up, down, or act as an aileron, which is up and down. So they can go the same direction at the same time, but essentially their functioning are not, it's, they're not just gonna drop. That would be a flapperon. Flapperons drop and continue to act as ailerons. Spoilerons would also raise together and continue to act as ailerons. Found it. Okay. it. Yeah. Okay. okay, so now this, same thing here. This is probably why they suggested taking the wing off, but again, it's just, I'm just gonna be a hard head and not do that. Okay, so that's torqued down nicely. This one's torqued down. So if you're a beginner and you're like, hey Brian, all that stuff you just did, like I don't even understand why you did it. Well, watch more videos from Brian Phillips RC and we will help you to understand over time, but it does take a little bit of time to kind of figure out the rationale behind a lot of these moves, okay? So if you're brand new to the channel and you haven't figured out why we do things the way we do, we understand it does take time and you're not, you're not weird. Um, if you sometimes have to question what I'm doing, that's normal. It's part of the process of getting, um, getting to know a different new skill and trade or whatever you want to call this thing that we do. That's have to go all the way. I'm just trying there. to figure out, this is kind of weird because, oh yeah. So the wire goes this way because the pocket is only as wide as we'll allow for that. So what I'm gonna do is I think I need to try to pass this under, right? Or wait, I have to do it before I plug this extension in. It's never gonna go otherwise. Ugh, that, oh, that thing is hard to plug in. Okay, so what I wanna do, no, 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 switch those. 
Thank mm -hmm. you. I was gonna say, don't switch sides. No, I was just trying to go over See, I'm gonna go. take and fold this so it's got a flat 90 degree angle, but I don't wanna crush the cables. And then I'm gonna fold it again and get a second. No, I wanna fold it the other way. See, what I'm trying to do is make like a smiley face shape. Because then maybe I can get it to pull pull through and pop up at the same time. Uh, not gonna not gonna be easy. Nothing's ever as easy as you want it to be, guys. Where are you trying to go? I'm trying to go through the hole. Where else would I go? There it is. There it is. Got it. Okay. So now I've got this one kind of blocking your view. My apologies. Now I'm gonna try to find an angle where I can pull this up. See, you don't need to remove the wing. Why would you want to make it easy? Right, it's struggling this way more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what else is super fun about filming everything on YouTube? Is that when you're trying to do something, you don't get to just try to do it. You get to try to do it with somebody holding a camera literally in front of your eyeballs and between the object of your affection at that moment, which in my case is trying to get this wire through. Next, yes. Next to your eyeballs. There it is, guys. Super smooth and easy, not effort at all. So honestly, guys, they they said it would be easy. That wasn't the one. I always say it's gonna be easy. And then like 45 minutes later and lots of frustration. Yes. We reluctantly finished the project. You should see us install security lights. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> be rated the wrong rating. <laughs> Okay, so I went back to my trusty three millimeter Chinese not correctly sized screwdriver. And we're gonna screw in the other one. You're like, that seems like a lot of work to have both of your ailerons down at the same time, Brian. Yeah, that's right, it is. And um, if you don't understand how much more amazing it is to have a plane that has flaps versus having a plane that doesn't, you may not be the right candidate for doing this type of upgrade. Could you maybe hold that for me so it doesn't move? Thank you. By the way, if you guys see the camera crew and you're like, why don't you hold stuff for Brian? That would be super nice because you obviously have two hands. Well, the problem is she needs two hands so she can focus the stupid digital camera. Yeah. Because Absolutely. digital cameras have this terrible um, way of like, hey, look, focus on that thing. Right. Like, obviously you're not looking at Brian's face or that thing well, that's right in the center you, of the screen. You always show millions of little teeny tiny parts, so. I like here, look, no focus. Right. I'm gonna hold this on my belly. Okay. So I've been working on that. Your holding spot? My holding spot. <laughs> so I'm gonna plug this in. Goodness gracious. That is really, really, really hard to plug in. Why is it so dang hard? <clears throat> get in there. That is like ridiculous. You can barely get it plugged in. And then it's like not even all the way purchased in there that I can see, neither is theirs. Okay, well evidently I'm not the only one that had a problem with it. Because the factory evidently did too. Okay, so now the next move is we have to plug into the open port on our receiver, but there is a possibility we're gonna have to redo some of that. And so what I wanna do now is I wanna go ahead and get the, um, hmm, yeah. We're probably gonna have to get into radio setup a little bit but as you can see, this thing is installed with just Velcro. So I'm trying to debate if I should just pull that out so I can slide back and forth a little further. I think I'm just, oh, I'm situated, the length of these two leads is what's stopping me. The, uh, the elevator and the rudder are what's actually preventing me from pulling this down further. So I wonder if I should just undo the Velcro or is it also glued? It's glued, it's glued and Velcroed. Yeah, the receiver's glued. Okay. So if you're thinking you could just undo the Velcro and get to it, you're not gonna be able to. So at this point, I'm thinking we've got channel six and channel five both opened. I don't know what channel that's gonna be. And you're like, why aren't you gonna put on your handy dandy upgraded thingy? Well, cause I don't know exactly where it's gonna go yet. So I can stick them on there and hope they stay centered, but then we're probably going to have to ultimately at some point, re-put those on, okay? See, this one's kind of pointed down compared to that one. Mm -hmm. That's our handy dandy work, but I don't even know if it's centered. Right. Okay, now we're also gonna have Phillips screws that go in there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two Phillips screws, 
I'm gonna put them in a pile right here so that they get knocked off the counter when Together. we least expect it. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so the next move is radio setup time. So the radio setup is pretty easy stuff. Now, also the other thing too is if you guys are used to fiddling around with RC stuff, then you should be used to fiddling around with RC stuff. So this should not really be any surprise to you, but hold on a sec, I need to, um, oh yeah, it's a P39 race Cobra, we're good. So I'm gonna hit back and cancel and I'm gonna scroll to the ultra stick, not ultra stick, where is it? It's the UMX, no. No, nope. slow ultra stick. Yeah, the SUS. I don't know how we labeled it. The other thing is, if you're a fairly new pilot and you wanna start getting into modifications. There it is, slow ultra stick 1.2. Yes. What were you trying to say to people? If you're wanting to start doing some modifications, this is an easier thing to start with than like, let's oh, add yeah. LEDs to a plane, you know, or whatever. Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, so the first thing you have to do to make this work is jump over here and you can see we've got throttle, ailerons, elevator, rudder, gear, aux one, aux two, aux three. And you're like, but this is an NX-10. Why don't you see all the channels? Cause this was built on an NX-8. So we may have to bind. Yes. I thought this was done on the NX-10. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, it doesn't really matter cause the whole point is this is what's here, okay? So we have all this and we're like, hold on, the ailerons are here. Well then what are these things for? Well, we don't have flaps. We don't have, like, how are you gonna make it work, Brian? Well, it looks like AUX1 is available. So the way you're gonna make that work is you're gonna go to system setup, you're gonna disconnect RF, and you're gonna go to aircraft type, and you're gonna go to normal, and they say dual ailerons. But really in our case, I want flap rons, because that's gonna open up a flap mode, whereas this is not. Now, if dual ailerons is configured, but flap rons is not configured within the AS3X and safe setup that's already established. We'll help you figure out how to fix that, okay? Obviously the tail type is already correct and we've already got our image selected, which is right there. Looks good enough for me. Now, channel assign, let's talk about that for a minute. Looks like aux2 is already assigned to G because we have thrust reverse. Why did we do that? Oh, because that's the default. Mm -hmm. So really what I want to do is I want to use Aux 1. Mm, no, we have to be careful about that because if we have thrust reverse set up, thrust reverse is already occupying um, auxiliary 2. So what we might need to do is we might need to be a little bit careful about this. If we have, th okay, so guys, let's talk about this for a minute. Changing the wing type means that Aux 1 was now preoccupied by left aileron, okay? Right aileron is already hooked up. Left aileron will now be aux one. Aux two was not occupied or changed. But if you had previously set auxiliary one to occupy or to operate your thrust reverse through the AV and ESC, you need to be careful because when you come back to action, the stick will be in the center. That doesn't mean it's gonna run the throttle but as perceived by the ESC, you'll be going from like minus 100 by neutral to, throttle cuts on, zero. Okay, zero is, I don't know, you're gonna either be forward or you're gonna be reverse. So just double check on that. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So the assignment for control of on and off of your thrust reverse, or more specifically the direction of thrust, you need to verify that you're not gonna overlap and now all of a sudden be controlling your wing on that channel. In our case, we use aux two, which is the default in the avian ESC. A lot of times we go up to aux three because that is doing nothing in a bind and fly plane. If you decide to do that, that's also fine, okay? Anyway, more about that later if we need to. Okay, so now when we go back to the regular screen, we got AS3X and safe. We already set that up here. Looks like that's on gear, so we're totally good there. Now we haven't made an assignment for flaps, but let's go ahead and set that to switch B. Okay, we're gonna leave it at, you know, just a little bit both ways. So we can see, you know, we don't know what direction it's gonna go, okay? So it's just gonna change the position. So I wanna start in the center so I don't damage either of the servos, okay? Now, also, they're not hooked to anything, so they shouldn't technically get damaged anyway. And also now at this point, we know where the wire needs to plug in. So we're gonna run this over here and auxiliary, okay, so we're gonna put the brown is down. That's aux two, right? Oh wait, 
What was that? Six. That was six. Yeah, because... Ox one. Ox one, yeah. yeah. So channel six. Yep. Yes. Okay. Thank you, camera crew, for keeping me accountable on that. Okay, so now these two wires, we need to try to make a spot to hold the slack, if you will, so that that doesn't end up interfering with the travel of our servos. So I think what I'm gonna do is try to flip this plane like this, and then look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take these two wires, one's right, one's left, doesn't really matter which one's which, but I'm just gonna tuck them in here, and that's just gonna keep them separate from the control arms. And also, they'll be kind of backward like this so that the flight will not accidentally pop them out. Does that make sense, mm -hmm. what we just did? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back into the plane stand so it kind of holds it vertical for us. Okay. All right, so now the next move we need to do is we may actually need to rebind just because we were bound previously um, on our NX-8 and then we got into the NX-10 around the time we did this plane. So grab one of the 1300 3S. You don't have to necessarily use the battery you're flying with to do the setup so long as it's the same number of cells, in this case, three cells. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and, but we are gonna do that, just so you guys know. All right, so let's try doing this. Did I draw a line where I like it? No, not really. Okay, so we'll just kinda pull that mostly tight. I'm not a huge fan of putting this battery in this plane. I squish it down slide this toward the other Velcro and then slip my other thumb toward it. And it's a little awkward, but it can be done. Now also our wires are all configured, but we're not hooked up to anything yet on our output to the wings. Okay. So I wonder if it would make sense to just go ahead and let this spring to life before we accidentally break one of those. Okay. So when we lay this down on its mains, we can go ahead and initiate, and we may need to bind. So I'm just gonna lay this down here. Obviously we wanna be safe in case the prop would start because we don't trust the plane until we trust the plane. Okay, throttle cut is on. Actually, I'm gonna take a second and put this stuff away. Okay, so throttle cut's on. If I put my hand here, I'm in danger. If I put my hand here, I'm in danger. If I put my hand here, I'm not so much. So I'm gonna do that just to be on the safe side. Just keep your hand out of the prop clearance. Okay. So now it's not gonna work because it's not bound to this transmitter, I don't think. So as a result, we have to figure out where the transmitter is and I'm just gonna press this button. Kind of hard to see it. There I see flashing. Okay, so it's flashing now, camera crew says. So I'm gonna click, scroll down to bind. Bind. Protecting. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, great. So now it's doing auto configuration. And also you may need to reassign your safe select in Ford programming if and when you do that, okay? So I'm gonna leave this over here. Help me keep that accountable so I don't pull it in the prop on accident. Okay. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check our control surface directions because we are disconnected here. Elevator up, down, y'all left, right. First thing I'm gonna do now, throttle cuts off, throttle cuts on, or excuse me, throttle cut is off. We have throttle going forward. We have thrust reverse that's going backward and still going backward. Okay. Throttle's off, throttle cuts on and test it. Why do I do all those stick movements? Because I wanna protect my hands and my arms and my face and all that stuff. And I don't wanna to listen to people say, I told you so for having not taken the prop off a million different times on camera. All right, so now that we have that done, we can lay this back into the stand. And that actually works really nice. I wish we would have done that the first time. Okay, so now we've got movement on both ailerons, okay? See, they're both moving and that's okay. We also know that these are going to be potentially centered mechanically, or they're gonna to need to be centered. Okay, so let's see if we can center them exactly. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty dang good, mm -hmm. no? Gotta go one more if we can. Nope, that's too high. That's too low. No, that's about right. Okay, so that's good. So now we can go to the outside hole. Outside hole here. Spin that on. Um, so now we need to get it so that that surface is 
square here. Remember, we are in the center position on the flap wrong control. See, that's too high, one spline later, that's too low. So how do you resolve that? We'll show you that right now, but let's go ahead and get that plugged in. Preferably your spline position exactly the same. Okay, now I'm gonna pull this one off. I'm gonna slide it onto the outermost hole also. Okay. And then I'm gonna check for the center. And fortunately for us on that one, it does line up perfectly straight. Again, just part of the manufacturing process, if you want to call it, of our homemade amazing <laughs> extension. Might have left a little bit of room to be desired. Now this receiver needs to slip forward again so I can get the screws in. So I'm gonna just tighten the screw back in. Did you grab both of them? I did. Oh, yeah, I see it now. Okay, so now that is the home position for that arm. And we're gonna do the second one here. Don't you mind my receiver that's just being a pain in the butt, getting in the way. Okay, so now that those are both secured, I can now re-secure this uh, receiver. This is a spatially aware receiver, so it does need to sit still. It can't be flopping around, or you're gonna have all sorts of grief. Okay, that feels pretty sturdy. And now we're done with the tools that we're gonna need for this project, which essentially were all the stuff you just saw in the last 25 minutes. All right, so now that we have that done, we have to align this so that it's even with the edge. But before we do too much more, what happens when we reverse the action on a servo? Almost always, the absolute home position changes. Yeah. I don't know why that is, yeah. but it is true. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna click. I'm gonna go into the uh, servo setup, travel, reverse. We need to reverse one of these. When I'm flying this plane, okay, if I attempt to roll left, then I want this to go down and I want that to go up. That's gonna roll my plane left. Well, this one's in the wrong position. So that means the right aileron needs to be rotated. Boop. Now, when I roll left, nope, see, did you notice it went, it's now going the wrong way. When I, when I rotate this, this one didn't change, that one changed, which happens to be the right aileron. Okay, so I need the left aileron. Sorry guys, there we go. Rolling, rolling. Beautiful, but as you can see, it did not make a significant change in the position. So that's kind of nice, that doesn't often happen. So how do you fix that? We just need to slide this down and then we need to open this up and be careful, these are not as strong as you want them to be. So they, they can and do occasionally break. I do not want to fix this. So we've already fixed enough of this little piddly crap today. One, two, three, four, five half turns. And then going to the outside hole, you'll see we're still not there. So we'll do six, seven, eight, nine, ten half turns, so five full turns. Gets us not quite there. There's another half turn out. And you're like, Brian, how, how do you know how many turns? It's totally guess and check. One more half turn. Camera crew, are you going to show them? You see what I'm talking about there, guys? Do we look pretty much perfect? That's pretty good. Do you want to go another half? You can try it, but I think it's going to be too much. Okay, so here's another half, and then tell me when it's perfect. Yep, too far. Uh, I mean... That's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to slide this back on, snap it, and then put this thing up, and that's going to hold it in place. So now we have ailerons that are functioning. We have an amazing, really super nice, robust control arm that we made almost from scratch. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out what else we have to unscrew that we changed. Okay. Okay. So now the first thing we want to see is flaps because that was the whole purpose of this transaction. Okay. So flaps, they go up, they go down. Okay. They go up, they go down. They keep acting as ailerons. That's good. So now we can go down to flap system 
and we can change, first of all, I wanna change the speed to two seconds, because that's usually what we like. See, that's gonna go down. That's the position I'm in now. That's neutral. In this position, I want it to droop like 30. In that position, I want it to droop even further, probably close to 100, okay? Now, if we're at 100, what happens to our yaw or to our roll authority? That's the roll you get, that's the roll you get, okay? During takeoff flaps, you have quite a bit of roll authority still. So usually with flap rounds, I like to go a little bit less than full on so that I still have a little bit of differentiation to distinct. Let's check for binding quick. Okay, what am I looking for? I don't think I'm binding. It's kind of hard to be 100% certain here. Hold on a second. Hmm. Are they moving the same amount? No, this one moves further. Okay, watch this guys. When I roll, okay, so I'm at 90% down. Let's just, for grins, let's just go to 100% down. Watch this. That one goes up, that one goes down. That one does not go down. Oh, I see, yep, I see what you're That doesn't go down, this one does. See that, it continues to go down. Which tells you an, an all too similar truth, and that is when you have a bind and fly plane from Horizon, the spectrum guys do this. They will change the amount of throw that the servos produce. So I'm gonna show you how we might be able to fix that. And usually the best way to do it is to reprogram your receiver, which we might need to do. Let's go into forward programming and see what options we have in this particular setup. So gyro setup, save select. Now currently it's off. We want it to be on, okay? So that we can use safe. there. ASX mode. So you're going to notice that whenever you rebind your existing plane to a new transmitter, you may have to reactivate safe. So just be aware of that. Okay. So now with safe on, it's going to try to auto level the plane. Okay. So you can also see a lot less travel. Okay. Look at the ailerons. ASX mode. See what's happening guys. These are only going to respond as much as they're allowed. This one's not being controlled by AS3X or SAFE. Now, there's two ways to deal with this. One, you have redundant control surfaces, unless in the case of differential. Differential is where one aileron generally rises more than the other aileron, okay? So instead of being like 100% down, 100% down, this one might be 50%. And because the efficiency over the top of the wing is slightly higher than on the bottom of the wing because there's more air surface. There's more airflow up here, okay. So usually that means you go higher on the high side and lower on the low side, okay. So like 100%, 70%, 100%, 70%. In the event of a differential setup that is programmed into AS3X and or safe, you will experience poor results in a flap around configuration because you're gonna lose differential. So that means you're gonna to tend to roll more one direction than you are the other direction. Does that make sense? But in a symmetrical aileron configuration where there's no differential and there's not some weird disparity in the wing shape or design, then you're gonna to tend to have the same amount of play from your controls but you're not gonna have the same amount of play from AS3X. AS3X and SAFE, AS3X is stabilization, SAFE is gonna be the actual auto leveling and stabilization in this case. So what's gonna happen is the wing is gonna be, the plane is gonna to try to self level, but only from the right wing in this case, or in your case, it might be the left wing, just depends on how you wire it. And that means you're gonna get half the output to help roll the aircraft back to neutral or back to level. So there are conditions where that's a big problem. Like RF-16-70 
excuse me, F1680, we turned on flap rounds and it was a huge help, but we did lose AS3X and safe on one of the wings. We still had good performance from that plane. We never had a big issue with it. However, you might on a plane like this because it's just, you know, it's a different ap application. So the way you get around that is twofold. A, you can just ignore it and just let that asymmetry happen. And it might be fine and you may never notice it. B, you can try, you can try to go into servo setup and change the travel. It generally doesn't work though, because look, travel is correct in normal mode. But then in safe, that's really where you see that asymmetry. But the AS3X will also present the same similar type of asymmetry in the correction, okay? Because there is no correction, there is correction. But because there's no differentiation in the amount of throw, you don't see it fleshed out on AS3X. You will see almost like a reduction in overall gain is the way it's perceived. But what's actually happening is you just have one less surface doing the same thing. These are redundant surfaces in an aileron configuration, but in flaps, they are definitely not redundant. Okay, also, you'll notice that the deflection is the same, but then we have more movement at the bottom of the range over here and no more movement here, which means that during full flap deployment, you're going to experience an asymmetrical roll. So you're gonna roll more one way than you are the other. How do you fix that? You can do mixing, it's very complicated, and it will probably not always work because as soon as you turn safe on, you have to have a different mix. I've tried, it's a pain in the butt. You can kind of get it close, but not really. So the best thing to do is to factory default your receiver, and then you can set that up to do two aileron servos or two flap servos, also known as flap rounds, excuse me, flap rounds. So the way you have to do that, unfortunately, is you have to use this tool to reprogram, to reprogram the receiver. Do you remember this thing, camera crew? The little, this oh, thing. that one. Yeah, this is for the avian ESCs. That's right, that's what I was thinking of. Yep. This is a programming cable that you use to hook up to the computer. Now there's some other different ways to do it, but this is the way we have to do it. Okay, and so we've done this in the past and we said the last time we did it, we're gonna have to put that on our laptop so it's a little easier to demonstrate. And incidentally, I yanked the cable out of my end and I was able to fix it. So that's why you see tape here. So be careful when you're pulling, don't pull hard here. You might actually just unplug it. It didn't hurt anything, it just pulled the end out. So it was really obnoxious. Okay, so this is, and here's the part number. This is what it is, SPMA3065. Now, what you guys don't know is that some of the newer planes that are coming out are going to give you the ability to factory reset from forward programming, and it comes in the form of advanced settings. Now, you don't know that, but now you do know that. <laughs> You'll be finding it out soon enough as you get new planes and we'll be reviewing them for you. So when that happens, it's very nice, very nice, because then all you have to do is literally go into this menu and reset it. Because doing first time setup and all that stuff is very easy on a plane like this. However, sometimes the planes have a lot of mixing and a lot of controls and a lot of weird gyro settings that you wouldn't have expected. And guess what's nice about the advanced menu? You can go in and write that stuff down and yeah. then you can copy it, which is really, really nice. So our next move is we're gonna get our computer set up rather than running a long extension cord, right? Yeah, I can grab my laptop. So we're gonna do that and we'll be right back and show you exactly how to do this properly. Okay, so we got a laptop. We installed the Spectrum Airware Programmer Beta, whatever they call it. So here's my screwed up cable that looks dumb because of the tape, but yours won't look quite as dumb. It'll just look like this minus the dumb. <laughs> and so when you stick that in the hole, it'll go making this chime here. We'll, we'll listen to the chime really, really close. Okay, so that's the noise you want to hear. This is a Windows 10 machine, I think. Uh, not that it really makes a big difference, but it's not a Mac, okay? And then this plane is currently powered. So there is an option on here where you have to tell it, uh, first of all, you have to log in. So I'm logged in as Brian. 
and go over my right shoulder, please. And I have to make a decision about something and I'll show you that when I figure it out. You guys see how it says power cable right there? We don't wanna power the cable because if you had this plane off, then you could plug into it and it would allow you to connect without battery being attached to it, okay? Oh. So you can do that if you're more concerned about safety and you don't wanna have some like prop strike or something, then you can unplug your battery, okay? And then in this case, we should be able to set this thing up on its end. And the programming port is accessible, so this should be relatively easy. So the minus goes down, so that's the darker of the two. Okay, and then instead of using like orange, like everybody else, they use this weird brown poop color. So the poop color goes up and the black goes down. Okay, and we're just gonna set this right here, I guess. I don't know if we're gonna need to have access to that or not, but you'll notice nothing has happened. So you have to power the cable. To ensure your computer is not damaged, be sure there is no battery plugged into the receiver. There isn't. Now I can power it. It's dancing. Okay, so it says models. Uh, the model systems on the device do not match those on the computer. What would you like to use? Use the computer settings, use the device settings. And so I'm pulling over the model, okay? And so it's an R630. And we can import. So let's edit what we've got. Okay, so we can choose an image. What image? Oh, never mind. And then this is the different receiver choices. Okay, so the model name could be like uh, this would be the uh, slow ultra stick, and this is going to be flaperons with flaperons. How about that? Because okay. I don't want to use a special character. Yeah. Goodness gracious. That was hard. Okay, so then you can drag and drop an image or you can just hit save. Okay, so we're gonna save that. Now I can open this. I should be able to expand this. What does it say? More, duplicate, reset. So I can reset it here. I can duplicate it here. Software updates. Okay, so this is software version 2.38. Serial number, blah, 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 blah. Check for updates. You need to log into Spectrum RC account and register this device. Okay, so what we're gonna do is you can install new software from an update file. So I'm gonna check for updates. We might pause while we do this. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're gonna try to uh, show all these screens here. Please notify me. No, don't. So this is gonna be the nickname is gonna be what we just called it, I thought. So what is this gonna be? Slow the slow ultra stick flapperons? Yeah. Whoop, flapperons. Okay, so now I'm gonna register and we'll do we'll click off screen. All right, so now it says online update, no new software is available at this time. And so we can go back to models. Okay. So then the option would be to Duplicate or reset. So I'm gonna reset this. Are you sure you wanna reset all the model settings to defaults? And the answer would be, goodness gracious, yes. Our focus has given us lots of problems. Okay, now I don't know if it's gonna lose the name or anything, I kinda doubt it will. It's not in focus. You're gonna have to go back like that probably. Jeez. All right, so now all you need to do is, I believe, disconnect, and it should be back to factory defaults. So let's disconnect. Okay, now that's gonna de-energize the plane. We'll slide this out of the way because there's a good possibility I screwed something up, and if I haven't, I'd be surprised. <laughs> now, this may not be bound. It may be bound. I'm not sure, but it's still on my transmitter as such. So I am going to make sure my stick is down, my throttle cuts off, and we're gonna not trust this plane again. I wanna see how far that is. Yeah, that's pretty dang close. So I'll just kind of put my hand like this. Okay, so plugging it in, we're gonna wait a moment. Okay, let's see what happened. I don't think it actually did what I expected it did because as you can see, 
it's already bound and I don't believe it reset everything, but let's check. Let's go down to forward programming. Yeah, it didn't reset guys. So I don't know what I did wrong, but we're gonna try it this time, not powering it up with the power button checked. So the power button is unchecked. I'm gonna check my throttle, throttle cuts on and tested, throttle cuts off and tested. Okay, so I've tested it both ways. I know it's working, so I'm confident to go ahead and plug this in. We definitely had it plugged in right. I'm not powering it this time. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in here. I just don't think I, oh look, there's a receiver and there's this. See this, there's the model. Oh, that's a 636, there's this. So let's go more, reset. Are you sure you wanna reset all this model settings to defaults? Yes. Then I can go edit, no, more. Do I need to download? Did I not download maybe? Oh, export, nope. Reset, upgrade, delete, duplicate. Hmm, not sure what I'm doing wrong. We'll pause and figure it out. It's because I'm not connected. So we're gonna connect. The model settings on this device do not match. Okay, so use the device, use the computer settings. Use the device settings, I guess. I don't know. Now it's gonna pull everything back in. Okay, now I can go to edit. That's not what I wanna change. I'm gonna go more, duplicate, export, reset. Yes. Okay, can't tell if it did anything. All right, so, okay, pause it. Okay, so I came back into software update. It said no new software version is available at this time. And then it came up with update available. 3.8, okay, so 2.38. So these are the other versions, okay? And it just talks about the different updates. But the thing I don't understand is this is new, <laughs> presumably. So I don't understand that at all. Okay, so now it's definitely doing something. You can hear it beeping. So guys, I don't know what to tell you. I think we did it right the first time. It just didn't populate. That screen did not come up. So now it did. Now it's working. Okay, so the, the device was updated successfully. Okay, so the model settings do not match those on the computer. Which would you like to use? I don't know. Use the device settings. No, use the computer settings, I guess. So now that should be reset. Okay. So now I don't know if it's gonna let us edit it anymore. Yeah, that's all correct. And then more. Okay, so let's see what happens. We've already rebooted, so we'll see if this works. Okay, roll left, roll right, elevator, rudder. Everything is working there. Ooh, look at that. Nope, it's still not the same. But what I wanna do is I wanna scroll down here to forward programming. Ha ha ha, other settings. Yes, restores, save as backup. Okay, good. So now we can unplug. So what did we actually do there, folks? We updated the firmware on that from 2.38 in our case to 2.38.5, I guess, presumably. Okay. Or something like sure. that. So we're just gonna set this beautiful cable aside. That was super productive use of our time. Almost as productive as when we built that control Servo arm. Yeah. Pretty exciting stuff here, guys. All right, so that being said, now at this point, we should be able to go in and change our settings to adopt what we have done. So the wing type, as you can see with safe, is like all dumb. Okay, as soon as we can do that, and all the surfaces move, we know we got it right, okay? So I'm gonna go back to forward programming. <laughs> you really confused her. <laughs> She's just going to town. Gyro settings, AS3X settings, save settings, okay? AS3X gains and priority. Looks fine to me. 
Looks fine to me. Don't care about that. Safe select. It's on, it's off. Okay, so everything looks good there. But now, other settings. Fail safe, initiate receiver, frame rate, factory reset. Restore from backup, save to backup. Factory reset, boo ya. Oh yeah, complete. Now watch this. Ah, look, we see no more changes different. Okay. Yes. Look, all the way up. They both move the same amount, guys. Pretty cool. Elevator, rudder, all the things you want it to do, even though it's not going the right direction, doesn't matter because now we can set it up like it was a brand new virgin. I was going to sing, but I spared you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so travel reverse. Okay, so obviously we need to reverse the right aileron again. And that's going to roll us. That's going to roll us. Elevator's correct. Why is it popping like that? I don't like that noise. Oh, it's just, it's just the foam. Okay. Y'all left. Ooh, that's kind of backward. There we go. 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 Okay, so everything's working the correct direction. Up to and including the flapperons. Amazing. Also, now we need to go through and set up throttle cut. Make sure it's on. Yep, still on. And everything else should be good. Throttle cut's the only one I double check just because it's a safety feature. Now, gyro settings. First time setup. Woohoo! That's what we were looking for, guys. First time setup. Make sure blah, 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 blah. Okay. Set the model level and press continue. When they say level, they mean this is not level. This is level. That's the way they mean level to flying level. Okay, so now I need to get uh, something pillow. like a pillow or a cat. The cat he's heard. way too fat for the that. The cat heard us, heard us talking and he sprung to life. He's like, get me out of here. Get me out of here. I don't need to be doing that. Hmm, that's probably a little bit too high still. Well, I don't know. What do you think? That's pretty. Level. Pretty close. Yeah. Okay, so now set the model level. Oh, this is not actually, this is not actually, this is just set the model. This is just figuring out where the orientation of the receiver is, okay? Yep, that's the way it is. You can tell because that's the direction the plane's sitting and that's the direction the receiver is sitting, okay? So we have established that. I do like to leave this level for another step, which we're gonna do in just a couple of minutes. So sorry, I always forget that, guys. Continue, gain channel apply. Ooh, now we can have a gain channel. That's super fancy. Remember, we're using auxiliary two for our thrust reverse. Yep, and right knob sounds good to me. Up, uh, ooh, it's thinking. I'm gonna just put my hand here just in case. Oh, look, they both dance now. Did you notice that? Mm -hmm. That's always handy. Okay, so now AS3X is set up. Now we need to I mean, there's more settings you can do, but right now it is in fact working. Flight mode set up. Ooh, that's the only thing we didn't set. Flight mode one. Okay, so we do need to set up a flight mode because we didn't do that before because it was a bind and fly before. So flight mode set up. Oh, it is on switch A. Okay, never mind. We just need to make the association. Okay, so let's go down to forward programming. Gyro settings, flight mode set up. Flight mode channel is going to be not inhibit, it's going to be in fact a gear. Okay. Next. Now you can make this not active on one of those two if you wanted. So like if you want to put on the D switch, you've got three positions, you could have AS3X, you could have off, and you could have the alternative mode, okay? Oh, we have evidently uh, blew it up. Gyro settings, okay, system setup. Okay, relearn services. This is the only thing we would have needed. That's all we needed. <laughs> that. If we could have gone into forward programming yep. fully before. Yep, gotcha. but, but we already did that on the first time AS3X setup. So if you make a change, then you can then fix it. So, Horizon, if you're listening, which I doubt you are at this point in the video. 
Why don't you just open up access? Oh, you did, never mind. So guys, you haven't seen it yet, but you will shortly. Don't you worry. Okay, first time safe setup. This is where you need your plane level. FM channel, it's already set, so you just kind of acknowledge it. And continue, flight mode three. That's the one we want. I made audible things in the Unbox Build radio setup for the Slow Ultra Stick, this plane here. Okay? That can all be seen on that video. So this is just a modification from that. Oh, jeez. Okay, so this is where you level and capture the attitude. Okay? Booyah. Oh, whatever. One, give me a break. <laughs> Let's try it again. Zero? No. Really? Yeah. Um, oh, well, I guess it's because the, the receiver is already... I kind of want it like that. Let's see if it goes. Eh, that's minus three now. Minus one. Okay, whatever. Good enough. So it's just the pitch is all it's concerned about. So if your receiver's mounted at a weird angle, it'll correct for it. Um, okay, so this is flight mode three. Safe mode is off. Safe mode. Now you need to turn it on to self level, angle demand. I just love all these like, it doesn't quite let you stay on the setting. <laughs> there it is. Uh, okay, so that's all hunky dory. I'm sure it's, it's fine. Now where it's gonna reboot. So like if your prop was gonna start, this is when it would do it. You know, I just came up with an amazing idea. I just thought of. What? So if you wanted to actually save all the trouble of building those control horns, if you were to steal one of these, you could put a shorter arm that came with your piece and then you could just like, except I think that's the one that it came with, right? Mm -hmm, Maybe. Probably. If not, if you got a shorter one, you could take that one off, it's a little longer and you could swap it and put this to the inside pull more. Okay, receiver is rebooting. No, it's not. Click for menu, there you go. All right, so now, roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. Yaw left, yaw right, elevator up. Watch this. Safe is off, okay. More movement. Oops, sorry. Do you guys see how they're changing? So that tells you that all the surfaces are at least working and responsive to safe, but that doesn't mean they're responding the right direction within safe, okay? We have a knob here. It controls the master gain. Within forward programming, you can go into gyro settings and you can go into AS3X settings and then you can change the gain sensitivity from one to whatever. I'm gonna set it to four for the sake of this test. You don't even need to keep it that way, but you can do it in this menu, throttle cuts on, stick is safe, what are we gonna do? We're gonna move it and see what happens. Nothing, nothing. Throttle cuts off, give it some throttle, nothing happens, nothing happens. You know why? It's not been activated. Okay, the other thing is fixed adjustable gains. Watch this, they're adjustable. But what are they adjustable to? Hmm, let's see, did we set that? I thought we did. Yeah. So it's adjustable. You said to do throttle, right? So we're good there. Yeah, aux three. See, and this is where you can actually set roll, pitch, and yaw if you wanted, which is pretty sweet. But you do have to have enough channels for that. Okay. Say so, you now walking out, throttle cut. Throttle cut is forced when you go into that menu, by the way. Over 25%, throttle cuts back on, and we're at four times gain. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. How do we know it's working? We're not in AS, we're not in safe, obviously, because this would be trying to find level. 
Let's check what that would look like. Oh, finding level. Whoa, 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 whoa. This way. Watch the elevator. All the way up, all the way down, okay? That's safe. Out of safe. Master gains all the way up. Master gain all the way down. See what I'm doing? I'm rolling the knob on R3, or on auxiliary three, the right knob. So now elevator is gonna go up when I go, well, it's actually upside down, but just say up, down, left, right, up, down, up, down. Now remember, those are separate servos, so you have to actually establish if they're both working the correct way. So up, down. Okay, come over here and stand with me. So let's, let's go this way. Rudder, that correction. Okay, watch this. This direction, elevator, up, elevator, down. Either on, up, either on, down. Either on, up, down, okay? So you can see that they're all going in the correct direction. We already have established that safe is rolling the aircraft in the, the correct direction. But this is probably way too much gain, admittedly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our knob all the way down to the middle. If you're in any doubt, just run it in this gain all the way down. And then after you take off, you can just slowly increase till you get to where you want. This would be zero. This would be four. So then you can just kind of do do. So that'd be about three, that'd be about two, that'd be about one X, and that would be about zero. Cause you go about a quarter, about a quarter, about a quarter, quarter, quarter. Or you can go over to your monitor mode. You can see the exact position. You're at zero, you know, let's say that you, you end up about there. Well, then you're gonna want about two X gain. But my guess is you're gonna want it about there, which is about one X gain. And I like to keep my knob about the middle so that when I go from plane to plane, I don't have some huge disparity in that adjustable rate, okay? So let's go back into forward programming, gyro settings. So this becomes a plug and fly. Okay, AS3X settings, gain from 4X down to 1X. You're like, well, why would you ever want less master gain? Because I don't wanna go from this plane to the next plane and have to do that you know, cause I take off and it's like oscillating all over the place, okay? Now you can also fix your gains and that's a really good thing to do if you wanna know exactly how your plane is going to fly from time to time to time to time to time. But one of the biggest and best factors of a plug and fly over a bind and fly is that you can actually adjust that gain on the fly, pun intended. And so guess what guys, soon you're gonna have that all the time if you want, which is really nice. And so many people will be calling to complain to Horizon's tech support. Why does my plane fly like crap? It was working great yesterday. Well, it'll be because of this. So anyway, guys, watch yourself there. We're gonna test the prop. Throttle cuts off, forward thrust, no throttle, reverse thrust, reverse thrust, back to forward. Okay, throttle cuts on, everything is tested. Elevator's up, elevator's down, y'all left, y'all right, roll left, roll right, take off flaps, roll, roll, landing flaps, roll, roll, with a little bit of overflow on both sides and an even configuration. That is why we do airplanes and not helicopters necessarily. <laughs> so if you guys haven't seen it yet, which you haven't, the M4 is coming soon. So anyway, really exciting guys. This is a fun project for those of you that love fiddling and for all of the rest of you that just kind of wish it would have been that way out of the box, I know how you feel. Just buy the servo arms. Just buy the servo arms. It'll save you most of the trouble. And honestly, that programming thing, we've only done that maybe three times. Yeah, I think so. And we've always done it a different way and having a laptop was kind of nice for that. So special thanks to Mike Brown on that. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, so much more from Brian Phillips RC. This plane is a fun one. Obviously, you've already seen it fly with the upgrade modifications. And if you guys wanna learn how to do upgrades and modifications, or you're just coming back into the arena of RC aircraft, and you need a little bit of help to get up to speed, you're in the right place here at Brian Phillips RC because we don't pull any punches and also, we try to teach people how to do stuff and not just necessarily talk about how amazing it was after we did that thing that we never show how to do. 
which is all too common on YouTube, which is one of the only reasons we have people that watch our channel because there's lots of other people that do a better job at all the rest of it. But we do this and that's one of the things we do do. We do do on our channel. So anyway, there's one other thing I wanna add that I just thought of that some of you guys are gonna ask about. So I'm like, okay, we talked about spoilerons, meaning rather than having the flaps go down, you can have them go up. Now, because we've reprogrammed all this, it should be pretty easy. I'm gonna go to mixing. I'm gonna make a mix. It's gonna be normal. It's gonna be controlled by whatever that is. It can either be switch beat or it can be flaps. I think flaps might be the easier way to do it. Flap. And I think we're gonna have an output of flap. Ooh, yeah, flap. Oh yeah, flap to flap. And it's gonna be contingent on switch C. So within the scope of C, I want it to operate within this range and I want it to not operate here and I want it to not operate here. Okay, so this mix is only gonna be active in that position, but not these two, okay? So I want flaps to operate at the range of, now I'm just gonna activate the flaps to the position I want. Now I always, I always struggle with this because I can never remember which way this goes. And I'm trying to drive the servos in the opposite direction. And sometimes you need two mixes to get this to, to work. And I don't know if I'm doing it right. So, okay, so we're gonna actually go to B instead of, okay, so B for flap. Which way are you going? I can never tell which way it is. This is something I've always struggled with when I'm doing this mixing and programming. So when I'm in B, switch forward, I want nothing. On this, I want it to mix something into it. Okay, so I'm gonna go, okay, so instead I'm gonna go flap, hmm, that's gonna impact it by switch B. Ooh, that could be a bad idea. See, now it's, it's actually working. Hmm. What, aux, what auxiliary is controlling flaps? One. Okay. No change. Okay, so we'll come right back after I figure out which direction to move these. All right, so we obviously have set this up for switch C. So when switch C is in this condition, we're gonna get one mode nothing's gonna happen. In this condition, we're gonna get nothing. In this condition, we're gonna get uh, something weird, okay? So I'm gonna show you the normal function is here, as expected, normal function. Everything's the same, okay? Okay. Now watch this. When I go to this function, I'm gonna have spoilerons. Now, what are spoilerons? Spoilerons are flaperons except the other way around. So they're gonna walk up instead of down, but you'll notice the amplitude of upness is not very much, and yet the ailerons continue to work in the correct direction, okay? Now, I just wanna show you this. See how it's minus 125 compared to zero? Not only have we canceled out the downward movement, we've added in an upward movement, but we're only getting 25% of that overall movement. So you can set up the offset to increase that value to the extent that you're happy with the amount of output. But watch what happens. You're still only seeing a 25% difference. The offset is like a predetermined offset, okay? It's not a function of a multiplier like this rate is, okay? Mm. So the way I've worked this out in the past is I will clear that, okay? I'll only use this adjustment. Now flap is being adjusted by left aileron, which is stupid. That's just auxiliary one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're still good there. And what we're gonna do is we just make a second mix and the normal mix, and it's gonna be based on the same thing, it's gonna basically be an, a mere copy of that. And it's gonna be, was it C that did that? Or left aileron. Left okay, so aileron. left aileron. And we could go to like right aileron, it might give us more output, but then you'd be like over here instead. Okay, so we're gonna set this first to switch C. So it only operates in that condition. And we don't want it to operate in that condition. We don't want it to operate in that condition. I don't understand the grayed out versus just not colored. Somebody please help me figure that out, mm -hmm. okay? All right, so then this would be the same negative. Okay, so with flaps deployed, look what's happening. It's moving more. It's a multiplier now. Ha ha, look, we have discovered it. There's a hundred. Okay, so now we're all the way up. Now we're a little bit up. Now we're neutral. But look, ailerons, 
ailerons, spoilers, aileron, spoilers, aileron, aileron, okay? So that would roll us that way. That would roll us this way. Everything else is the same, but we have now spoilerons and flapperons. And we also have the deployment differential. Now, also, one other thing I just thought of. So basically, I wanna point out the concept here. You have one mix that initiates the move, okay? Which is not enough to actually substantiate what I want. That's annoying, but it is what it is because you can only do so much. Then this one becomes the multiplier on the first one, okay? So if you wanted it to be even more extreme, then you can just add another mix. Yeah, it's kind of annoying that you're limited in that, but if you just allowed it going all over the place, what happens is people would come out of the pulse width modulation range, and then they'd end up in the next channel and you'd have the planes crashing into each other and the whole world would just come to an end. <laughs> so anyway, um, the other thing I just noticed is that flaps, we never did set up a mix to the elevator. Okay, so I can't remember what it was because it didn't exist before. So I'm gonna go like, let's just do six and 10. That seems to be generally, generically a good mix. Now let's watch what happens. We are not in our weird spoiler on. So take off flaps, landing flaps. If you're not sure if that's going the right direction, what you can do is you can increase this 10 to like 50, okay? You want that to go the same direction as the flapper ons if they're a full length, <laughs> if they're a full length. And if you're not a wing that's like a body wing, like the F-15, those planes, like the F-16, they get weird. Sometimes you have to run the elevator correction the other direction. And then other times, there is no correction. I'm like, how can this even be? Mind blown. But it does actually work out that way on a few planes. Depends on the airfoil, depends on the shape of the wing and where it sits relative to the wing. Generally, outboard flapperons go down, elevator goes up. Inboard flaps go down, elevator goes down with it. Because the inboard ailerons go down, you tend to balloon as you apply more and more flap. Outboard ailerons go down, and for whatever weird reason, it pushes your nose down. So then you have to apply up elevator to counter it. And what you get is additional drag and reduce stall speed by changing the shape of the airfoil. It's just where the airfoil changes shape matters. And I know that's weird and sort of counterintuitive to a certain degree, but then you also have to add in the fact that you have thrust that's being generated by the prop, which is greater than the airspeed of the aircraft. And so that, that wash can cause some different factors. So anyway, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this to six and 10 for elevator correction. Okay. Six and 10, now watch, take off flaps, landing flaps. You can see that small movement, okay? That should be correct on this airframe. Now, what I can't generally do is, in the event of these things, watch this, spoiler ons, up, up. We still have an elevator correction, so guess what's gonna happen? Mm. It's gonna tend to nose down slightly on that. So what you can do is you can actually take and make another mix to unmix that crap. So what you would do now, now there is a delay on flap action, but there will not be a delay on this mix. Spectrum, if you're listening, I want delays here also, if possible, someday. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up elevator to elevator. And it's gonna be at a rate of elevator times a factor. Uh, no, it's gonna be an offset. And that's gonna be with switch C. Ah, dang it, I did my rates first. See how it saved that offset? Watch this, I'm gonna clear that just to avoid confusion later. I only want it to be active on this. I don't want it to be active here and I don't want it to be active here, okay? So watch this. So the offset would be a function of now that stuff. So really it's a function of whatever ooh, switch B is now. Uh, can I do flaps? I can do flap. Yep, to elevator. Okay, so see how that goes down still? 
What I want to do now is I want to make this move back up. See, that's going the wrong way. So that's going up. So now that just went up. The full flap deployment is supposed to be 10%. Now watch this. Didn't move. But now watch in the middle, it'll move. See, it moved. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're going to need to do a six and then we have six and 10. Mm -hmm. So six is 60% of 10, right? Mm -hmm. So if you had five and five, you could do five and then you could double that, okay? So similar to the way we did the other mix. So in this case, what you need to do is you do your flap runs or your spoiler runs rather, and then you have mixed this out in this full setting. Now, generally speaking, if you're doing spoiler runs, it's not gonna be like you're flying around all the time. You just might find out that this works better as flaps on this airframe. So you generally, you're gonna like fly it once, you're gonna figure out, do I like this better or do I like that better? And then you're just gonna set flap mode to that. But I want you guys to understand you can do it, okay? It's still, it's fun to do this stuff, I think, but I'm weird. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually set this flap to elevator to six. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna fix this setting, okay? So now, ooh, see it didn't change. See that's still going down? Hold on, I gotta think about this for a sec. So why did that not change? Does it need to be doubled? Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Yeah, let's, hold on a sec. I just wanna try this real quick. Let's say it's 12. That moved up. So I'm just gonna try six, and then I'm just gonna make another mix, okay? So one more mix. Sorry guys, normal. And let's do flap, where is it? Oh, come on, you're in here somewhere. There's flap, we could also tie it to switch B. But then in the middle, there's nothing to adjust to. It's just an offset then. We need this to be uh, to elevator. And we want this percentage basis, but we have to set our switch first. Switch C. Okay. And you guys saw what just happened, right? When you have full flap deployment, you can go to full flap deployment from full spoiler deployment by just shutting that off. And there is no delay, okay? There's only de delay on deployment because this action is tied to flap. Flap is controlled by flap mode, which is a function of wing type, which is a function that is controlled with an AS3X. So you have to remember that, guys. All right, at least as it pertains to airplanes. All right, so on this, we're gonna go, we're gonna go to 10. It's not gonna work. Let's just see how it works. It moved up just a little bit. Let's see if we can go a little bit more. See how it moved? It actually went up this time. Ooh, that might be what we want though. Cause then it's basically like the same function. Okay, now watch this. It's gonna go down when I flip it. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so now we've got, I think I'm gonna do, if I do 20, that's double. And if I do 12, guess what? That's exactly double too. Because then you're undoing what you did and then you're adding what to it that you didn't want. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so watch this. So take out flaps, landing flaps. Oh, so cool. Now normal mode, take off flaps, landing flaps. They go down or they go up. Ooh, that's fan stance. Okay. Great, so now we've set it up, guys. We've done all the things that you didn't need to do that you wanted to do that you couldn't do because it wasn't set up to do those things that you wanted to do. We hope we covered it all, and obviously with that type of workmanship, you gotta be proud. Look at this. Yeah. This is a beautiful thing right That's here. That's your best yet. That is pretty awesome, I think. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you're in any doubt that that's gonna hold up, seriously though, guys, if you don't think it'll hold up, one thing you can do is you can put a drip of CA in there and it will do amazing things. Like I've actually glued things like that together and then just pinned them with a straight piece of wire and it just holds the pin on the, on the surface and it's, it's fine. But the thing is, if you wanna do it right, 
order the $3 part or whatever, it's like $3.99. So hopefully we answered all your questions and then a few more that you didn't even know you needed to ask here on Brian Phillips RC because that's what we do best. And if you wanna help support us by buying this plane, this battery, this transmitter, or something like it, or maybe something you see in the background. We can't talk too much about the things you see in the background always. Sometimes we accidentally forget about them and then people notice them. But if you do need to uh, find a reason to support us, then it would be for this type of activity because all the other guys just fly it and show how awesome it was. So we try to bring you that extra value. And if you want to help support us, that bird just landed on the grill. That was crazy. It's kind of scared me at first. I know, I saw the corner of my eye. So um, the other thing you can do is we do Patreon and PayPal, and we haven't turned on memberships on the channel. Ugh. We have super thanks. We have super thanks, but memberships, uh, I don't want to do that too. It's like, we didn't want to do PayPal when we did PayPal. Do people want us to do we it? We didn't want to do Patreon when we did Patreon. But it is nice. Yeah. If you guys want us to do memberships, just let us know. We'll consider it. For but all it, three of you still watching. Yeah, for all three of you. Yeah, that's right. If you want to be members, you can be members. We could call them the uh, watch the whole video membership. Yeah. So anyway, guys, we appreciate you being here with us. We like doing this stuff. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer on camera than it might if we were just doing it for ourselves. And the kids could be running around doing crazy things while she's making like lunch and stuff since now three o'clock. And um, so there are some disadvantages that we face, but we still do enjoy doing this. I love doing this. My wife, not so much necessarily, but she tolerates it because she loves me. So thanks camera crew for helping us film all this amazing action. <laughs> and uh, we thank you for staying awake. So if you guys haven't already got the NX-10, I would suggest you consider the NX-10. If you haven't already got the NX-8, I would not suggest the six right now because I feel like you're gonna grow out of it just like really quick. I would start with the eight at minimum, but 10 is probably a little bit better wiser spending because you're not gonna outgrow it for a long time. We got 164 models in there. Yeah, I think so. So it's a lot of models. And that, that reminds me, we need to rename this to say Flaperons. So I'm gonna do that now and we'll do that off camera because you don't need to see a scroll. But we really appreciate you guys watching these videos and supporting us and being here and part of our little RC um, club, whatever you wanna call this thing. So thanks for being there. Thanks for supporting us the way you do, for buying the things you do from the links that you do. That is the best way to support our channel is when we offer things that you happen to like, buying from our links, and then we make small commissions from the manufacturers. We also help to grow our relationship with the manufacturers, whether it's something like Horizon or you know, a million other brands that we work with. We wanna serve you, and the best way we can serve you and stay wholly truthful about everything we do is to have strong relationships with a variety of different manufacturers so that we can keep them honest in a way that still helps them to conduct business. So that's the way it works. There's no BS involved with that. If they send us planes, we review them, and then they sell stuff, they're gonna be happy with us. But at the end of the day, we aren't gonna just sell a turd to try to make them happy. We're gonna help you guys see, hey, this is not a good plane, or this is a good plane, or it's somewhere in the middle. But we don't do this is the best, fastest, cheapest. That's a bunch of garbage gimmick, internet troll junk. And you can find a million other channels that do that. But what we do here is we try to point out the strengths and weaknesses, and then you guys make up your own mind if it's worth spending the money on. I mean, obviously it's your money. So that's what we do. That's what differentiates us from the, uh, the rest of the people that are doing this stuff. And that's not to beat them up, but just they do different stuff. So for us, when we do a review, we're not just saying buy this because we you know, want you to buy it. We're saying buy it if it makes sense to you. If, it, if we showcased it in a way that you think it makes sense for the budget you've got. And also we understand that you guys may not be at the level of this, well, you might be at the level of this. I mean, this looks like a really basic beginner plane, but truthfully, it's actually, you can do this as an advanced pilot and really have fun. And this would be more of an advanced thing to do. But at the same time, like if you're a beginner, you could probably get a plane like this. I would not necessarily suggest that. I think it's a little too easy to break the landing gear myself. But it's a good beginner plane in the sense that it's inexpensive, in the sense that it's easy to fix when you do break it, in a sense that it gives you a lot of the features that you're gonna expect and want as you grow into a more advanced pilot. But from that same, you know, on the same, hand, I would just get you into something a little bit easier to fly like an Aero Scout or, um, you know, probably an Apprentice. I really like an Apprentice for beginners. Uh, Apprentice 1.5, in fact, if you can get it. 
But if you wanna fly this, you'll be able to get away with more wind. If you wanna fly that, you're gonna have a little bit easier, slower flight and more fun landings because the tricycles help to make it easy. Tail draggers are not terrible, but they do definitely come with the added benefit of being able to tip over into the grass and damage your prop. Whereas a tail dragger also uh, is gonna be able to fly in tighter quarters generally than a tricycle. But just, just like a million things like that, we're gonna to try to bring you a, you know, a platter and say, hey, do you like the way this tastes or do you like the way this tastes? And um, you get to decide what you're gonna be eating on the menu. That's what we do at Brian Phillips RC, and we know that you guys have recognized that or you wouldn't be here with us still. So also, um, we really appreciate you guys staying with us for so many years, it's almost been a decade of doing this, and um, not quite not quite a decade, I think we're almost nine years. Almost nine years. But it's still almost a decade. That's a long time of doing this. You guys have seen a ton of footage. I mean, like thousands of watch hours uh, for the average uh, in my <coughs> prisoner. And so we really appreciate you guys watching and coming back for more because we do have so much content, we can't hardly squeeze it in. And we like to give this stuff a little bit of soak time. So we'll release a video. We're not gonna release a video the same day. We're not gonna release a video tomorrow. If we had that much time, we would love it, but it's just, it's very impractical. It takes way too long to produce long format footage. And that leads me to my next question. That is, if you guys are willing to help us smash the like button, if you do, you'll be helping us because long format is a dying art. Most people do shorts, it's cheaper, it's easier, it's quicker, it's less time involvement. And guess what? The guys that are doing shorts have really enjoyed a lot of lucrative business opportunities. We don't do that because we feel like this is what people need and that's what people like to do when they're pooping. So maybe we'll do shorts sometime in addition to this, but we feel like this is where real value is garnered within the RC community. So guys, if you don't have a good club you belong to, and you don't have somebody that's you know um, two or three years deeper into the hobby that you can go and ask questions to, that's where you come. We're your guy, okay? We'll help you get up to speed. We'll help you guys know what's available and we're gonna help you guys keep in the air. So that's all we got for you. Camera crew has something. Battery. Battery, oh, battery's gonna die. So I guess that means we're done. Thanks for watching, come back for more.